Hello everybody, welcome to Hanging With Bears, episode 682, maybe, ish, I think, I haven't, um, I'm running a bit late, so I haven't had a chance to beautify myself yet. So today we have on Go To Bear, um, obviously everybody knows him, uh, Annie D, first in, welcome, you win today's prize. So yeah, once everyone starts piling in and go to here, then we can get going. Ted, second in, you you blacking stupid Hungarian Canadian you. Where's my um thing? There we go. Third in is Gota because he's keen Steve. Uh, you send me a request and we'll see if that works. So hope everyone's having a good week so far. It's uh, it's been a busy week. My son has um, he starts his new job on Monday, and we've had to get him a car. So he's we've just been out practicing. So Ted, you're like this. It's his first trip in his car. Um, we drove to Anfield, so it, that was his first trip today in his car. So yeah, send me a request, Matt, and then um, we'll get going. Uh, on my screen, I was in before I need the. I should be the special. Yeah, I know you. I don't want to call you a boomer, but you know. Right, I have, re I have accepted your request. Uh, Golden go to bed was a nice wink, you know. It's almost like we we planned it and knew what we were doing. Obviously, we didn't. Um, but. It's almost like we did. We were so close to actually being organised. Right. right. Matt, go out. Come back in and I'll send you a request. Let's try and have a good show. That's very positive words, Joe. I'm liking it. I'm liking this new Joe. Yeah. Very positive indeed. So yeah, as soon as back gets in, we will crack on, get going. Spies is live, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I say it all the time, but I really need to learn a musical instrument for these these bits of dead air, just so I can uh, entertain the troops. I love how calling Ted um, a boomer gets him so irate. He's like straight away like, no. Like, I was born on Tuesday, and boomers stopped being born on Monday. Um, 1968, I didn't even think that was a real year, Ted. I've heard tell of, of such times, but I didn't think it was a real year. Um, thus, not a boomer. I'm a very wise old Gen Xer. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know when the, the cut-off points are, but Owen's right. I think it is, um, it is a, a, a mentality rather than a, you know, an arbitrary cut-off date. Um, I'm not upset. I'm literally. I know you are. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's. I think it's. I mean, it's like anything, isn't it? It's like the the N words. Um, you know, whites can act just the same way. So it's it's you know it's not a color thing. It's just more likely to be, should we say? So it's boomers are more likely to uh, act in a boomer. Way way than non-boomers, but there's certainly non-boomers that, um, give us a sec, I shall send you one now, should have cleared, yeah, invite sent, um, yeah, there's certainly non-boomers who act in a boomer way, but it, it seems to be more of a, a boomer thing, hello, yo, what's going you, on, well, I'm doing great, how are you, mm. yeah, I was just saying, it's a busy week, um, my lad starts a new job on Monday, like straight out of uni. Yeah. But he's um. What's he doing? He's gonna be. He's doing the the. I can't remember what his title is. Um, like video production editor, some something like that. Um, for a an animal feed place. Um, it's like a massive, like animal. It's like the, the like one of the main distributors of animal feed. Um, so he's going to be doing all the promo stuff and all the, the videos and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a great job to get, you know, like as your first job. Um, so he's not following in his father's footsteps of being a gay porn actor? 
Um, so far, no, but I mean, you know, we all have those times when money's a bit tight and the temptation's there and the other guy's handsome, do you know what I mean? And, and you yeah. just... Yeah. Hey, whatever helps you sleep at night, you know. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like it's like 35 mile away, the place, so we, we've had to get my car this week. Um, nice. So then we, we've just been out to... Checking out cars. It's it's exhausting. Um, because I, I we've got him an older one, so like there's less to go wrong on it, um, and obviously you know as, as cheap as possible. But it's it's one of them. Like the, the further back you go, then trying to get one with low miles and all that. So it's because he's he's gonna be, his brother. Well, it, go he's gonna be putting about fifteen to twenty thousand maybe a year on it. So like we've we've done all right. It's done like forty or thousand the car we've got, and it's like twenty years old. So. He's putting that many miles on it for being... It's going to be, because it, it's like a 70, 80 mile round trip every day. I guess so. so. And then obviously what whatever he does at the weekends and, and all that kind of thing. So, we, yeah, we didn't want to start him off with one with like 100,000 miles on, because he'll be dead in a year. So over there, you guys have like those really tiny cars for like... Exactly. Really like minute, small men. And, and... Well, it's, it, it's for the minute, small roads. Um, our, our men are getting bigger. They're getting more Americanized as the you know, as you keep peddling your your filthy food over here. You guys like fried yeah. Snickers bars over there. We have fried everything. Yeah, fried Mars bars, fried Snickers. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, I'm blaming you lot because you invented the fried stuff. We, we before you lot, we just had chicken. No, oh, and then you. Yeah, that's what it was. Porridge. You started coating my... it and stuff to to please your uh, to please your workforce. Beans on toast. Um, yeah. There's nothing wrong with me. Beans are. Do you have. Um, so, you know, you had like your food pyramid and stuff over there, didn't you? Yeah. So, we have like a similar thing where it's like five a day. Do you have that? Where you've got to eat five fruit or veg a day? They. I don't know what it is. I haven't watched the food pyramid so long. I just know it's like completely inverted. Yeah. Like, I saw there was somebody put like a, a video of the South Park that was making fun of it. And they were like, invert the food pyramid. And they mm -hmm. flip it over and it's like. Mm -hmm. Pretty much how it should be more or less yeah and it's like meat dairy eggs most of that and then it's like the bad stuff at the top a very very small amount of it but yeah i mean it's but most people i don't know most people still eat like that i'd say your average american eats like that mm -hmm. i'd probably say your average first world person eats mm -hmm. like that canada europe you know even like parts of mexico probably well, we have um, it's like it was they brought in about May years ago now. It was probably like twenty five years ago. They brought in this like five a day, and everyone was like obsessed with it. So you've got to eat five fruits or veg a day, and it, there's like, like loads of rules behind it. So like a strawberry doesn't count. It's got to be like you know so many strawberries, and then it was. But a lot of it was to kind of like push the fruit and veg market again because it had slowed because that no one was buying fruit and veg anymore. Um, and we're like. A nation that creates a load of fruit and veg because we're just. Do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, for us anyway, because a lot of a lot of England is just farmland. It's just so, and we we have like the the weather to you know all sorts of things like like cauliflowers and potatoes and stuff. Yeah, like you know, parky, root vegetables and like exactly yeah, just like damp root vegetables. Yeah. And so and then when people stop cooking, they don't what they don't know what to do with a cauliflower or a, a, a broccoli or whatever. You know what I mean? They don't they don't have a clue what to do with it. Um, but anyway, baked beans are one of the five a day. So on, if a tin of baked beans, it says on the tin, it's one of your five a day. So it's government approved. Are you so following this uh, diet regime? Well, I mean, if the government wouldn't lie to me, would they? No, so, I mean, I don't see why they would. Exactly. So if if they say it's healthy, then obviously it's healthy. Yeah, you know, the tin cans probably it's probably not laced with like heavy metal chemicals or anything like that. Like they, why would they do that? The Heinz factory is up the road for me. I think it's like the biggest one in Europe or something. It's it's some it's it's like it's a huge thing, and it's like yeah. three or four miles up the road for me. Like my my missus works like in front of it. Um, she's not a, like a street worker or anything. It's like she works in a her building is in front of it. <laughs> she doesn't just stand in front of Heinz. <laughs> like, um, and it stinks. It it smells so bad. And it, the basically the there's a river that runs behind it. Um, and so whenever it's oh. like in the summer, it just stinks because they must be pumping so much crap into this river. Yeah, um, I've heard, um, heard that Arjun Svonder Planets, you probably heard Owen talk about him. He was saying that people that live next to toilet paper factories, mm. 
that they had like really really high levels of cancer because mm. of what they put in the toilet paper it's like glues and all this stuff mm. and so if you live near that, that and they're blowing out the fumes all day long you're just breathing that stuff in i think that's probably gonna have some problems i think that's true for a lot of places there was um when i when i like one of my first jobs i used to do estate agent stuff on a saturday um like a saturday and sunday you know like um so if the house was empty because we had a lot of like repossessions and stuff so the house is empty i'd have all the keys and i'd go and show people around them and stuff on a saturday and sunday um and one of the streets that we did there was a, a, a brick factory like over the road and then this like row of houses in yeah. front and they were all suing this brick factory because I, I would say there was like 12 houses like nine of them had like developed cancer in like the last 18 months um so they were all like suing this brick company because they said you know it was, it was to do with like the chemicals and, and all this so i think I, i'm because the cancer rates like as as far as we know are like rocketing do you know what I mean so the, it must be something that's well oh you know or a collection of things i mean i i think partly it's because we're now calling everything cancer where we we used to be far more specific but, um. yeah i mean they might have broadened it a little bit but i also think they're they're using like most of the cancers and diseases in my opinion that we see today like the really bad ones are from like heavy industrial toxins like people would have like problems back in the day like even biblical times it, it was more like malnutrition mm -hmm. And stuff like that and they could yeah. get like some some like heavy metal poisoning from like smelting a you know an iron rod or something like that if you're just breathing that stuff in but now it's just it's so it's so prevalent mm -hmm. in so many things and it's not like this is not like a, a fear thing you can you can avoid it if you just pay attention to it you know uh for the most part but i think that's what causes those and, it, and it's over a time period so these people that are living you know if you live under an airport or if you mm -hmm. live next yeah. to a toilet yeah, paper, yeah, yeah. It's just constant, and that that's the problem. You know, it's like it's like Wi-Fi, and so if you're just constantly like holding your phone up to your head, mm -hmm. yeah, you're probably going to get a brain tumor in like yeah. 20 years or something like that. But if you if you can mitigate it and do things like to to offset that, you'll you most likely won't get a crazy hardcore cancer. Well, well that's the thing. I mean, when we were growing up, um, you know, the, the, I mean, my parents never smoked or anything, but loads of my, my friends did. So, you know, we'd be in the car, they'd be smoking in the car with us. And, so, and it was just it was just what people did. I mean, no, no one thought much of it. You know, I, I'd come home, like, stinking of smoke and stuff, and I was, like, 10. And, it was, like, my, my parents found it odd because they, you know, they didn't smoke. But, you know, to other people, it was fine. But a lot of the... the these people would have already developed cancer and stuff by that point. Do you know what I mean? Or, or certainly, like you know, later on, like the parents. I mean, but when, but yeah. around that time, they would, the the rate was one in three. We used to have all of the commercials on for cancer all the time, you know, on the TV to like raise money. And it was like one in three people will get cancer. Like one in three people that you know will get cancer. Now the same commercials, the same one in two. So that's a huge jump, you know. If those if those statistics are right, yeah. but now we don't smoking cars we don't like a lot of the things that we traditionally said well you know that causes cancer you know we don't do it you know allegedly like the sun causes cancer and so now people wear sunscreen or, or whatever you know do you know what i mean like there's loads of things that said well if you do this it will stop cancer but yet the cancer rates have shot up i think there's always like uh like yeah i i, I think i missed that i was born in 92 so i missed mm -hmm. that time period mm -hmm. when people would smoke in the cars and like you didn't yeah. have to wear seatbelts i was like I think that was more like early '80s, mid '80s. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't uh, have to deal with that. But so you have that. But then and we got rid of that. So then, but more people, like you said, with like the sunscreen and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I don't think most people back in the day probably didn't use sunscreen or just. just mm -hmm. There's, there's always like this balance. So it's better yeah. and it's worse at the same time, in terms what, of like. What's your um? What's your views on sunscreen? Because obviously you're in Florida, so it's you know it's. Yeah, um, I don't I'm have, assuming it's. I never, I never use yeah. it. If you now. Now, if you're like a really pale person, mm -hmm. you know, wear, wear protection. And I, I work outside and I, you know, it, it helps if you're covered up because it, you're not so hot. Yeah. But the sun, it's, it's nothing to, nothing to be scared of. If you're, if you're eating a really bad diet, yeah, you'll burn easily. Mm. Right. So if you're not getting plenty of like good animal fats in your diet and you're eating like a bunch of seed oils and stuff like that, you're going to burn. Right. Um, but if you're eating a healthy diet, you're hydrated, you're not being crazy about sitting out in the sun forever, mm -hmm. you'll be fine. 
you know. Um, I mean, I'm kind of dark. Like, I got a little, I got a little spice in me. So, uh, but I'm not, I'm not like black, so I can't just like stand out there. Yeah. Um, but again, like if you're, if you're not stupid about it, and if you eat healthy, you'll be fine. Well, I, I, I put like sort of a face specific one, like the first few days of summer or the first time, you know what I mean? If I go on holiday or whatever, I'll put some on my face because my face burns and my nose burns and stuff. Other than that, I haven't worn it for like, forever. But I mean, like very, very... Keto, then that doesn't really cover that much. No, no, but you've got to you've got to get that uh, as far of, as as a, an all over tan as you can. Okay. Do you I mean, because well, why hide it if you if you've got it? I mean, if your fans want it, they want it. Exactly. They can't, they can't <laughs> I mean, those top, those top five don't tan themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, no, yeah, but I, oh, yeah. and I mean, I'm like blonde, blue eyed. Northern European, do you know what I mean? Like my my granddad was from Poland, and so, do you know what I mean? So I, if if anyone's gonna burn, I would burn. Um, but like you said, being sensible, do you know what I mean? Like, and, but even that, I'm not overly sensible with it. I just I just don't, you know, just bake there all day every day. Yeah, you know because I mean? you don't even need that. Like even like again, unless you're like black or something, yeah, mm -hmm. you need more time in the sun. But if you're if you're light skinned you just need a little bit of sun. 20 minutes per day at least like on your face you don't need a crazy yeah. amount and again if you're just constantly like putting on i would just like look at what's in that sunscreen because it has been shown that that stuff does cause cancer mm -hmm. and like you know again well, you the reason i put it on, on it's it's like a, it's a piss booing like face thing and it's it's literally because otherwise let's say first day i'll just burn and peel do you know what i mean I'll, I'll, like my nose and my head and just and so it's just like maybe like first two or three days on holiday or something and that's it yeah do you know what i mean so it's, it's yeah. to me that's better than burning and peeling and then you know anything that then comes with that but i mean appealing is just part of it anyway you know if you if you think of like if you work out you, you kind of like tear the muscle so it grows back stronger and all that so i suppose like peeling in a way is is you it's know like so shedding, the skin grows right? back yeah the, the skin grows back stronger yeah well they have like i know like my sister she has like a, oh she has little kids so she'll put like yeah. stuff on their face and stuff but it's like all natural like what i mean they have stuff out there now that you can use so it's hard with kids because I, I was like like i say i never really used sunscreen and then when i was I, you know looked into it and stuff and i thought right well I'm, I'm glad i didn't but then when you have got your kid and he's out in the sun and he's only little there is like that part it's it's just programming in it or, or, or whatever like there is that part yeah yeah it's like if you have a little kid probably put a hat on them right mm -hmm. or somewhere keep them under the umbrella right? they don't again don't bake them out there you know but it, like if you think about it logically since the beginning of time mm -hmm. assuming there, there wasn't sunscreen or anything like yeah. that back then people were fine and they, they were way mm -hmm. healthier than a lot of people are today they just covered up or they had protect like some sort of shade or something mm -hmm. they're not this it's it's the chemicals and the stuff that you're putting into your skin mm -hmm. and then that just absorbs and then causes a whole plethora of problems down the road um who was laughing at me irish true seeker was, was laughing because I, I said piss booing it's um it's posh piss booing i just when you say so i just i didn't even i just let it go it's you're just <laughs> it's posh it's it's a, it's expensive sun cream you're turning into the scouse at this point so. <laughs> um what i to say but, is i think gagging should be limited to three comments Throughout the entire stream. Well, Gagan in our um, in our group chat for the the hanging with bears stuff, he's limited to two lines. Um, otherwise, he gets banned for a day. They're the the rules that we have about Gagan because you you know how he can waffle. So he can when whenever he comments in the group chat, he can only use two lines. If he goes over that, then he's banned for for one day. Like um, two lines per interaction, or two lines the entire day? No, no two lines per interaction. But he can't. He, he try. He, he, you know what he's like. He's tried to find ways around it. So he's done two lines, space, two lines, but and all that's with band. And then he's done like two lines. And if someone like responds, then he'll, he'll quickly get another two. Do you know what I mean? So like, so no, he's he's he, two lines, and that's it. But he he's learned. Do you know what I mean? So you can't teach old dogs new tricks. So he, he's he's learned. I mean, you um, I think he would know by now. Um. Yeah, copper is that I permit him to use my lines. I mean, copper copper is weak, um, which is why you shouldn't have women anywhere near any kind of rules. Um, what did you say? 
she permits him to use her lines. Um, that's, that's the problem. They they feel bad for a guy who's seven hundred years yeah. old. It's like I, I get it. Like yeah. why? I mean, you might. Well, that's it. But but to a woman, gagging, I suppose, is this harmless, like bumbling fool. Like, but you know, <laughs> to, to, to us, like he's, he's you know he's just an irritant. Um. So yeah, we have to uh, we have to for his own good, really. He needs um, to be monitored. Exactly. Basically. Exactly. Um. He says, yes, a new salty old dog. You ruined the vibe we had in there. We used to have it so good. Yeah, but see, you used to have it so good. That's the, the difference. You you had it so good. Nobody else was. And now and, it's, it's and wonderful. It, it's comments like salty old dog that... Exactly. That really... That's mean, who talks like that? You know, Somebody from... I mean, the <laughs> the store yeah. yeah, exactly. He's, he's, that's like... That's like Cutting edge slang to uh, Joe Gagan. I mean, he's only just stopped using Latin. Um, yeah, he was counting in num Roman numerals for the longest time. Exactly. I was like, Joe, you got to get up with the, you know. Uh, right. We did have a question. What was it? Um, Ted says, Stunt, genius move having a word hanging backwards for the stream. I keep reading Nick now. Am I backwards? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Nice t shirt. Nig. Nigna. Nigna. Well, all t shirts and hoodies and zip up hoodies and caps are available from shirtsaloon.com. So you're not, um, not, not going to do your own uh, denim line for hanging with bears? No, because it, you've got to have your own style, haven't you? and I get why people want to copy, but you've got to have your own. You've got to have your own style. I mean, you wouldn't. I doubt you'd market like the unibrow. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, the grabble mask. If if they can grow it, by all means. No, but that's what I'm saying. Like a fake unibrow, you can't. Yeah, but it, the, the it, denim that I wear, it's it's not. It, it's it's part of me. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not just off the off the off the rail. You can't like imitate perfection. So exactly. You know. Uh, sorry, Del says you sure you aren't from Canada now. I don't know who that's to. Sorry, Dale, to be more specific. Because we've got a poll. You kind of want to be from Canada. Um, I, I, don't, I doubt they're talking about me, but I have uh, Middle East vibes. Yeah, Joe's already just made the chat into gibberish. He, I mean, he he can't help himself. Like, I'm, try I'm trying to... Catch up with the chat, and it's just like him that's just saying, saying three, three comments. I think that's generous. Three comments, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it did. I do feel bad for him, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I do. There is that part of me, and I, I don't know if it's like a like an empathy or a sympathy or whatever, but there is that part of me that, that, that thinks, oh, bless him, like he'll, you know, he'll sort himself out, and it, but he never does. <laughs> I mean, kind of like all when he feels for Carl. Yeah. Like you, you yeah. think like you know what I mean? I, I have that, but um, and then it, and and then I'll think that, and then I see his little face come up and it, and a message, and I just want to hit him. Like so, it's just we, um, we could always do a lobotomy. I would on Joe. take it off the table. I doubt, I doubt there's very much left after all that's these years. I, I true. think it, that's true. There might not be that much up there. Um, right. Anyway, let's get off Joe. Because it, it's, I can feel my heart rate getting, getting more Get pulled into a, a boomer trap. That's exactly. Like, you know. So speaking of boomers, what have you made of the boomer week and then the return to it with the, the boomer week part retail the other day? Mm. I think it's great. The the Jim Goad uh, interview was like, I loved it. It was it was really entertaining. You weren't in the chat, were you? Yeah. No. No, I watched I watched the replay the following day. It was funny. It was funny mm. in the chat, but it always is. But it was like shocking seeing somebody like be because most people try and like push off mm -hmm. like what they've done, but he was like proud yeah. of what he did. It was weird, wasn't it? It was an odd thing to see. Like yeah. I've never seen like someone like that unhinged mm. like in real time. Like you just saw him like the unwrapping just take yeah. place. It was, but when he was saying it, cause he was he was saying it with almost like a this, like a like a smugness, but kind of like when you're at school and you you kind of you know you you tell a 
story of like how you beat someone up at the weekend or whatever, or you know that kind of thing. Like he, you know, or, or like someone was picking on me and I pushed him over, or and and you have that kind of like pride. He had that over like beating his woman up. Like it was just yeah. weird. It was like a weird kind of thing. And the weak hand thing for me, that was like the best line ever. Like I, I hit it with my weak hand. Yeah, it almost, I still gave it twenty seven sixes. It's almost like you know he's like a like a a young kid who like says stuff because he thinks it's cool. It's mm. almost like he was saying it because he was like, "I'm gonna get street cred, man. I don't care. I'll hit a woman." It's like, dude, we're not like you're in the wrong area yeah. if you think like we think like, oh man, that's cool, hit women. It's just like, dude, like, no, like what? what because when you start talking about that, and I thought like because the. the re- is that there is a point where kind of women get more protection than men in certain areas and like family court where the child will automatically go with the mother unless she's like a crack addict or something do you know what I mean so there is like an argument to be had there but he wasn't making that argument he was just saying like yeah i, hate it. I, I, mean, like, <laughs> well, yeah, I shouldn't have been done for it. there's a thing where like yeah the the courts are favor the women right they mm-hmm. usually get the better end of the deal on the yeah. but I judge women less than I judge mm. men because I think, like Owen talks about, like they're so they want to be led so badly. That's all mm-hmm. they want. They yeah. want to be led, and so you can lead them mm-hmm. in a bunch of different directions. You can lead them in the right direction, or you can lead them in the wrong in the wrong direction. And so, being that we do, like you basically have as a guy jurisdiction over your woman, it it ultimately is the guy's fault. You know, mm-hmm. whether it's the father or even like the brothers or whatever it is in their life, you know, you now again, they have free will and they can make their own decisions. But I think at the end of the day, if you had stronger men, you wouldn't see as many of these problems. And so it's like, that's a a testament to Jim Goad. It's very like feminine, like how he just like lashes out and gets angry and hits women. It's like, dude, you can't control yourself. Like, she doesn't like. She... Well, I mean, if he has, if he has a daughter, what what argument can he possibly like have to protect her? Do you know what I mean? Like he 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 couldn't. I don't because he said he had a kid. I don't know if it was a son he or a daughter. A son, I think yeah. He's got a son, right? Okay. Um, but yeah, if he's got a daughter, what? And she comes and says like, "My boyfriend's hit me." Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. You know what I mean? Like he he has he, he has nothing. He, he's not set an example to it that you know that that that's not right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or the same with his son, you know, if, it is, if his son, like, attacks his girlfriend or, or wife or whatever. It, the, the whole thing was just weird. It was just like, but it, it, but you could see, like, the the kind of the boomer brain, if you like, like, unfolding as, as it went on. Because at first I thought he was, you know, because he, he, was, he was talking a lot without listening. Because Owen was then, like, addressing what he was saying, and then he was, like, already on to the next point. He was just there to kind of, like, platform and, and yeah. kind of... No, I don't I think he was intentionally trying to filibuster, but he was there to, to, you know, I think he's just used to talking to himself on the live stream. You know what yeah, I mean? So, he cares about yeah. really anyone. He's, he's the center of the world, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, but he, and, and like I had said this earlier in the chat, I was like, he called him a dipshit because he wanted the attention yeah. and to get on the stream. He doesn't like, because in the beginning, he was like almost like not, did really disagreeing with Owen for a while, mm-hmm. and then it started to kind of go off the rails, and then you started to, saw it to like unwind. Yeah, just like, like, like he's, like, it's like a legit crazy person. I mean, we we've seen it over the years with like different. It is the kind of the sacred cow, and obviously his sacred cow was the 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 boomer thing. Whether that's because he he. he knows that he is one or the, he, his audience are or, or for whatever reason like that was his thing mm. and you could see him kind of unraveling the same way as the the retards in the chat do with like paul week or with yeah you know the trinity week or whatever do you know what I mean? like the, it was the same kind of mentality where they're, they're just blinded by this like i was with you until we just saw it live like happen, yeah, like exactly right, right in real time but it's like even like again i don't like rim job but, but like I don't even think Rim Job was that crazy. Mm. Like at least Rim Job, like during the debate, was like kind of under control. Like he was, mm. he was ridiculous, but yeah. he wasn't like that. Yeah, and like I don't, I don't know. Rim Job's got a weird past and and whatever, but I don't. I he Jim Goad seem it seems to be the worst from from the people that Owens interacted with that have kind of fallen out. Yeah, I mean. 
with, with rim job he was he was at least I, I think he was misguided but he was at least engaging within the debate to a degree yeah. because he was addressing what Owen was saying directly whereas he wasn't he was just going to the next point and then kind of dismissing whatever Owen was saying um so yeah I mean he, he wasn't it wasn't a debate as such, do you know what I mean? It wasn't like in in the slightest, but it, it was. You could just see him unraveling and getting worse and worse and worse. And then by the time we got to the kind of like, yeah, obviously I beat her up because she was. What, what it, it was something like she she gone is gone at the girl he was cheating on her with with an axe. Or something. It was something like that. Something like that. He said like, so obviously I, I obviously I had to hit her. <laughs> and then he was like, oh well, she she tried to run somebody over with a car. She yeah. ran somebody over with a car, and it's just like. Maybe she did for one, okay. And it's like, mm. but then on the other hand, like, why would I believe you? And then mm. Owen was like, well, where is she at? Like, is she okay? He's like, uh, I don't know. Like, she's probably dead now. Yeah. It's like, it's just, again, it's like, if he just disagrees on, like, boomer stuff and he's mm. a typical boomer, like, that's mm -hmm. whatever, that's fine. But, like, he was like, again, it was just this weird thing of, like, seeing somebody who actually thinks that's okay mm. yeah. to do that. And he mm. wasn't, like, no shame at no. all, you know? Like, none. No, and then but like I said, there was like a pride behind it, or like a a, a gloating to it. You could tell that he's he's told this story a million times, yeah. you know. Yeah. And 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 I mean, whether whether he really feels like that, or whether it's his kind of like coping thing. Do you mean he, he could have been, you know, high as a kite on something, or drunk, or, or what? Do you mean well, whatever? Do you mean and and so like rather than say that he's kind of like well no I, I don't apologize like it's just the way women are and, you know so maybe it's like a coping thing but either way like it's to to publicly do that, that kind of thing is it was just weird i think he believes it on like a superficial level i think deep down everyone knows the truth mm. right deep down everyone has that and that's why it's like the further you go away from it the more like problems you have and mm. angst and stress and whatever but I think he tells himself that. Yeah. And I think he actually probably does believe it. Um, Ironic Grey Matter Bear says, do you think a moderator would have helped on nah? Um, I don't to think, a degree, I think it, yeah, yeah. I think it would have done. But, I, I mean, I, he still would have said crazy stuff and still wouldn't have listened to Owen. Um, I think, I, I think a, a truly impartial moderator might have like evened up the speaking time a little bit. Um, but I think he he still would have tried to dominate everything, and 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 even then he still wouldn't have listened to what Owen was saying. Yeah, he would just kind of you know skirt around it. But even the fact that, like even after it was like okay, they're just like having a conversation, you know, mm. he couldn't yeah. even do that. No. And so he was so unhinged mm. that. And again, I'm glad there wasn't a moderator because look what came yeah. out of it. It's like it yeah, was exactly. like very revealing to to see him. Yeah, like, I think at some point. A moderator would have cut in and and kind of saved him from himself, kind of thing. You know what I mean? And, and not made him reveal what he was what he was saying. Yeah, exactly. But if he's got a book out that's explained all this, because he kept saying it's in my book and all this. So if he's if he's got a book out that and 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 his audience must be aware of all this, like how has he got an audience? Do you know what I mean how is how are people watching him? How is you know what I mean? Like because I'd never heard of him before this. I didn't and know. I would either. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't. Know, I wouldn't watch that and think yeah he's the guy but obviously some people are you know if he's on censored tv and so you know he's not a, he's not a nobody i didn't you know, know he was on he's censored mm. until owen was like do you think you're representing the network well he's like yeah. you're on censored mm. too i was like i didn't know that i thought he was just some guy on twitter who had was an author or whatever yeah but i mean there i mean you have the internet you will find somebody for everyone mm. like You'll get some sort of an audience. Yeah, true. Know. I mean, I think there is a lot of um, because I I see it in my suggested a lot, you know, on YouTube. Um, there does seem to be like this trend for like woman hating from from men at the moment. Like it, it, it does seem. I mean, I know you've got like the make tell people and all that, but just just in general, there seems to be like this kind of like Andrew Tate. Yeah, like. You know, all girls are only fan slots, and they're all just like bimbos, and and you know they they only want people who have got a Ferrari, and so they, they they can all fuck off and die. Do you know what I mean? Like that that kind of like thing. Like there does seem to be that sentiment. Like and and a lot of very popular channels that are, are doing that kind of thing. The, what's the um? 
can't remember what it's called. It, 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 it's like a round table, but they usually have like yeah. 10 OnlyFans yeah. girls on. Whatever. Yeah. I think it's yeah, something like that. Podcast, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. um, that Andrew's been on there, hasn't he, from um, The Crucible? Because yeah. I've seen a few, it, it comes up in like clips, yeah. things and stuff like I've seen that you know, too. Where, where people like own the left. Like, and then it comes that had that like. They have like all these girls, and then there was one that was just like looked like uh, the thing from Star Wars. Mm. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I'm sure, you've seen that picture before. There's like one girl that's just like this mound, mm. just this mm. giant thing. But yeah, there is that sentiment where it's like, oh man, they're sluts. And but then a lot of those guys, even if they say like, like that fresh and fit, I was talking about one of the guys got caught, uh, or like getting this girl to get an abortion like they'll talk all this stuff but mm -hmm. like when it really comes down to it they're not really yeah. that and, it, yeah. and it's always about like oh i gotta get the bag and this it's like they're still consumed with money and still like in that mindset that oh i gotta make a lot of money in order for the for the girl to like me uh -huh. and it's like, like again i get it their security women want that but i don't know I, I don't i don't think it matters nearly as much as most people in that space think it no. does no, I mean, there's always been that. I mean, you see it in nature, don't you? You know, you see, like, mating rituals and stuff like that. You know, there's always been that kind of, like, um, where the men have to impress the woman. The, the man has to prove himself yeah. to the woman. And, and the woman just kind of, like, waits and, and waits for the, you know, the whoever impresses her the most and goes off with, with him. Yeah. So I think if you're not a, an impressive person in, in, in any other sense, you know, you don't have a sense of humor, you don't have any morals, you don't have any common sense, then, yeah, you'll probably think, well, well if I have a, a, a lot of money, then that will impress her. Or if I have a, a nice car, that will impress her. Um, yeah, that's true. If, if you're lacking all the other stuff, then yeah. you will kind of fall back on that. And, yeah, I mean, it's like, it is true. Like, women, like, you know, it's like we, we see them and we're just attracted. That's how we, mm -hmm. you know, get attracted to women. They, they can look at guys and be like, oh, he's cute or whatever, and be attracted to that. But it's like, if you're funny, if you're like, you know, if you don't let them walk all over you, that's way more attractive yeah. than, you know, having $2 million in your bank account. Yeah. To most women. Well, I mean, yeah. Some women are just, yeah, they are just gold diggers. But yeah. yeah, I mean, you will have some. And, and I, I imagine that that side's getting worse because of social media and because, like, you know, if, they, if they're growing up watching, you know, makeup influencers and, and this kind of thing, okay. and then they... You know, yeah, yeah, and so they see that lifestyle, and they they think, right, well, if if I look like her, then I will get that, or if I act like her, then I will get that. The same way that men are looking at Andrew Tate and thinking, right, well, if I act like him, then I'll yeah. get crocodile slippers and a, yeah. and a Bugatti. Um, but on the whole, do you know what I mean? Like people aren't like that. They're, they're not. <laughs> it, it, they're really not. <laughs> if you talk to most women, mm. they again, again, maybe on the surface they want that but like they don't want that no and so i do think it's pretty easy not easy but easier to convince them again if you're if you're if you're truthful if you're a good leader if you're you know mm -hmm. righteous they will want to follow you right yeah. if you're you know ambitious if you work hard like most women would re take that over you know traveling around the world road and private jets and all that stuff they might think that they want it but they mm. don't you know and it just takes a guy to come in there and be like you know explain it to him you know have a have um like something backing your words like the the words escaping me right now but um uh, have like, like a philosophy on you know mm -hmm. what it is that you're you're talking about and yeah. be able to explain yourself and if you have that i i, I really do think that you know you're better than ninety percent of guys out there. Oh, of course, sure, because you 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 you're promoting a future for her. You're showing her what life with you would be like. Do you know what I mean? You know, and so yeah, she she can depend on you, but you can also look after her. You can protect her. You can provide for her. You can, and then providing for her doesn't mean you know via the latest shoes. It means you know providing a safe, stable home for her to raise a family. You know yeah. that that kind of providing is far more important than yeah i can buy a, a nice handbag today yep. but we see it a lot with like all, i mean we saw it with them um, in corona you know with like all the van life videos and then suddenly everyone wants to do that everyone wants to go out and buy a van and, and then like 
six months later, everyone's skins and the brand's broken down, and they've yeah. they, they, they've sold the house and got no furniture, yeah. and, they, and now they're stuck in a car park somewhere. Like so, it's yeah, it, it's just a snapshot, isn't it? And then so if you think that that's like that all the time, then you're an idiot, and you deserve what you're going to get from it. And it just it it, it kind of like devolves in into like materialism for a lot of it right it's like i can you know owen's talked about this like the homesteading movement becoming like overly materialistic like yeah. i have the nice chicken coop and i yeah. you know we yeah. have yeah. this beautiful kitchen sink where we grow our fresh vegetable whatever yeah. it is right and it can easily just go down that path mm. but i mean again like i say you get what you deserve it i mean we, we have this discussion all the time my wife and me because we the, our dog died um a couple of years ago now um and I I don't want another one yet and she wants she wants to get a dog and she's she's on Instagram all the time, she's scrolling through and it's just like dog video, dog video, dog video and she's sending them to. And and it, you know, it does look it does tempt you, you know, because you'll see this like perfectly beautiful dog like behaving in a perfect way and all this and, and she's like, We can get one of these, we can get like they're not like that. Do you know what I mean do you know how long it's taken that person yeah. to film that moment of that dog? Do you know I mean it's taken them all day just to get it to look at the camera and look like it's smiling. Like dogs don't walk around smiling at you. <laughs> do you know what I mean like they, they just don't like, they will shit on the floor and they will tear your stuff up and they need walks and they need like they they're not showing you that bit. It, um, it paints this like perfect picture. Yeah. Like it's very easy to do on social media. And then there's then there's also like the opposite of that where that's kind of known that it's like oh you know life isn't always this easy so then people will like purposely put out like a video of like them crying like you see girls doing that like yeah. their makeup's running and it's just uh -huh. like I had the whatever worst experience and this is me when I'm vulnerable and it's like it's just the same thing just on the opposite mm -hmm. end yeah like one side showing oh look how great their life is uh -huh. they're getting the attention. Right. right it's me 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 the other side is look how look how much of a victim i am look how horrible it is you know me 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 oh you're so great in the comment it's the same thing just on on two sides of the spectrum um upstate mama says get her a dog don't you start upstate mama i'm hard enough times it is with saying no i will we will get a dog like i, I love dogs we've always had dogs but i'm kind of liking i've got a bit of a boomer at the moment because like james is like growing up now and he's, he's getting more independent so we don't have like the kid to look after and then the dog like has gone and so we don't have the dog to look after so i'm kind of liking not having any responsibility at the moment not having to like clock watch all the time and like when you go somewhere like well we've got to be back for you know what i mean i'm liking that bit um so yeah we will we will get another dog get i'm not cat. getting a cat paul shut up get a cat no no cats are get cats hate me as well well, like they, I mean, no. we talked about this before. They know they can sense mm -hmm. who the good people are. Well, no, they can they can sense who's weak. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is that it? <laughs> so that's why they like women and gay guys. <laughs> I feel like gay guys are more dogs, though. Like, let's be honest. That's like those little. Like, yeah, but only dogs that look like cats. Only dogs that look and act like cats. A gay they don't guy look and act like cats. They do not look at it. Those things are super, super needy and like. Cat is like alone by itself. Small dogs don't act like cats. No, but they they will act like a cat. And as far as like, like a dash hunt is is like a, like a, a you call them like wiener dogs or whatever. Like they're like the perfect example of like a gay guy's dog because it's it's acting yeah, it's a bit like a cat. It's needy. It's got a little brain, so it's thick, and it, it doesn't like it can't comprehend gay, so it doesn't judge you. They just and it's like because it's a wiener dog and they just like yeah exactly and so there's that aspect yeah, um punk, you know but like but they, they, I did, I mean, they, a gay guy he would get a wiener dog for like the pun or you know yeah i mean i don't think a gay guy what goes with a rottweiler or a, i mean it's the, the old school gays would like an 80s gay would have a rottweiler like yeah. an, 80, an 80s gay who went to like the Blue Oyster Bar and Police Academy and, and wore leather. Like, he would have a Rottweiler. He would have an Alsatian or, or whatever. But Like, when he, like, frosted his tips and, you know, did things like that. Well, no, because it, the, the frost in the tips, I kind of get because it looks great. Um, but the the modern-day gay would... would the, you can't even do gays properly now. Even the modern-day gays are weak. At least the, the 80s That's gays are great. 
they've gotten very soft. Like an eighty, it was a genuine thing. That when when we first started going out around town and stuff, so we were like sixteen. The first the first time we went out into like the clubs and stuff like that. So we started going out the clubs and the bars and pubs and stuff. Um, and it was always like a thing, like you stay away from the gay guys because there was like a, a genuine kind of like, you no, know, the gay guys will like beat you up. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it, it because they were they were you know big gay guys. So you stayed away from them because they were like in a group and, and all that. Whereas and now, like, and you, just, you wouldn't think that. You went right towards them. And, <laughs> Everyone's like, I did stay actually, away. You just. Whew. I got followed by, this is a true story. I got chatted up and followed like two o'clock in the morning on my own. I'd, I'd been beaten up by a bouncer. Like, it was like the worst night of my life. <laughs> like, it was freaking horrible. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't. I wasn't allowed, I can't remember why, I wasn't allowed to go out. I'm sure you're right? like a smart ass to the bouncer. You're probably drunk and say it's a smart ass comment. It was, it, it was, you know, right, there was this, it, it's a long story, but I'll try not to gag in it, right? So, there was a, there, we were all meeting at this club, there was like a, a big, there was a group of lads and a group of girls, and we were all meeting at this club, and I was supposed to be getting together with this girl at this club. It was like, it was, because we were all young, we were like 17 or something. So, you know, when you're like arranged to get together, like, we're, 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 we're going, so we were, we were doing that. You go, bro, and you kind of, you know, everyone has a little match. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Like, everyone just pairs off and then you, you whatever. Um, and I've been, to my, I've, I've been to my mate's house and I told, I said to my mom and dad, like, I was staying at my mate's house and they were like, yeah, but you're not going around town, are you? So I'm like, no, like, it's, you know, I'm just staying at my mate's house. But then went to his house and we all went out. Um, so we, we, we'd gone in this bar first and I'd had like two pints or something went to go in the club like we all walked in and then he grabbed the bouncer grabbed me and said like you're not going in you're drunk so I'm like no I'm not and I genuinely wasn't I wasn't drunk at all um, so he's like you're not going in but I was like well the girl, this girl that I'm supposed to be going with is in there like so I've got I've, you know I've got to go in because it was like the biggest thing of my yeah. life at the time. <laughs> I'm like, I have to, you don't understand. Matters. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's like, no, you're not going in. So I'm like, oh, all right. So I went back in, so all my mates just like left me and went in. Right? So then I went out, went into the, back into the pub. There was another lad that I knew in the pub. So I took my jacket. I had a, I had a, I had a yellow shirt on and a black leather jacket. Right? Cause I was, I was cool. So I took my, I took my leather jacket off and I, I had curtains at the time. I'd like, Quite long curtains. Um, curtains, like, yeah, like you know, curtain like hairdo, right? Um, so we went. So I went back into this pub and I gave my jacket to this other lad that I knew. So I so said, "Like, are you going into that club next door?" So was, yeah. So I wear my jacket, go in, and just give it to me when we get in, because I'm trying to. I'm going in disguise. So I went into the into the bathroom, put a load of water in my hair, like slicked all my hair back, like walked back to the club and I'm like he'll, he'll never recognize me now <laughs> <laughs> so like, went back in and like got past the first bouncer was just like I'd pay to get in just open the door and then this other bounce like grabbed me again like put like I've told you once like fuck off right so I'm like just give me a break like, and explain the story about this girl so she's like yeah, I'm sure he really cares yeah <laughs> he's like I don't care like you, you're an idiot like go away right? So then I'm stuck then because I can't go home because I'm I'm not supposed to be going out and I'm supposed to be staying at my mate's house. I can't go to my mate's house because he's in the club. So I'm like, hey, I don't I don't know what to do. So I just ended up wandering around town, met up with another load of lads in in another pub, and then was just drinking with them all night. So this pub closed at eleven. The club closed at like two or something. So by then I am drunk. So I'm like, no, I'm going in that club. So I went back to the club, <laughs> like saw the bouncer. Just like push past him, like I'm like I'm going in. Jesus. And <laughs> so like we ended up like fighting. Was it um, a fight or was it more of no, like a? No, I had I had because I had like courage. I had like I've been drinking like drink. bravery for like three hours, <laughs> so I had courage then. So I had I had him up against the wall by his really? neck, and or by his throat, like, and then like his mates came around the corner. And I'm like, um, five six, five five. Yeah. No, five ten. Okay. Uh, um. And the club had like white wall. It was all painted white outside. And it had, had like a few punches, kicks and all this. And I ended up like my mouth just like burst open. So I had like blood all up the wall of this club. And it was on the wall of the club for like 
six years like my blood was like on the, the outside of this club they never like paint cleaned it or painted over it or anything and you show like every girl you brought there like yeah that was, yeah, that was my my story like yeah, yeah. that's what i did for the last girl yeah. Dude, <laughs> and that was with my weak hand with the bouncers usually if you have one the other ones see it because there's usually not a lot of action mm. usually not i mean i guess they get in fights sometimes but if they see it they'll just they'll all like pounce on you so it was just like the one guy just you and him duking it out. Well, so that, that, that I, I, by like I say, by that point I was drunk, so I'm like, I can take him. But then, yeah, forgot about his were mates. You, so then, his, friend, where, what were your friends doing? Well, they, they, were, they were just in, they were oblivious to all this because they were in the club. The ones that had been drinking within the other pub had gone out. So, like, all my friends were in the club, like doing whatever they were doing with the girls they were supposed to be meeting. Yeah. So by this time, it's like. I don't know, half 11. So I've still got like two hours to kill before my mates come out. And because this was like before phones and stuff, you know, like, I don't think we had phones by then. Um, so there was no way of contacting them. So that I thought, right, right, I'll walk back to my mate. And my mate lived like a three mile away, two or three mile away. So I thought, I'll walk back to his house. And then by the time I'm like there, they'll be, they'll get in a taxi and we'll, I'll probably meet him there. So as I'm walking back, there was, um, there's a, a a pub and it's kind of like in the middle of nowhere this pub and it's it was it had like a bad reputation but it was open when i was walking past so i thought i'll go in there and get a drink so i went in there and it i don't know if it was gay night or not right so this is yeah. where the gay guy comes in yeah. right and i genuinely don't know if it was gay night or not but i walked in oh it's all coming it, together it was, it was like walking into the blue oyster bar like i walked in and it was like it was dead dark but all i could see was like just just men everywhere and, he, and it just you know you just get a feeling and i was like it's a different all right smell in the air. yeah it, it was yeah it was it was very weird so then i went to the bar and i'm like leaning against the bar and this fellow comes up to me like this guy comes up to me and i'm sure he was head to toe in leather right so he's like clearly like trying to chat me up so i'm like right okay like um right i, I just need to to go and get something <laughs> and then like went and left like just like left and walked up so as i'm walking i, I look behind me and he was behind me like quite a way back but there's no reason for him to be walking but at this you know what i mean and it was like he saw you're going to the bathroom yeah but i wasn't like <laughs> yeah so so i'm walking on this road it's now like half one in the morning oh, he um, followed you out of the car yeah the that's bar. I'm saying he was walking down the road and it, it was it's it was really like in the middle of nowhere there's no re there's no i'm only walking along there because i'm trying to kill time to get to our mate's house like there's no reason for him you know what i mean it's not somewhere where there's a load of houses and stuff um doesn't matter thought, to him he's just yeah well he's he's happy that there's no witnesses <laughs> um, yeah. and so i'm, I'm walking so i'm looking behind me and i thought i like, don't kind of let him know that i can see him do you know what i mean because then he might like <laughs> whatever like, come back yeah. um so, so I, and then i went around the corner and i just like started running and like anyway so then they got to my mate's house and then everything worked out in the end but yeah so that was them um, i nearly got raped got beaten up by bouncers and never got with that girl so, and and lost my jacket i had to go back for my because this little lad had got in with my coat on so <laughs> He was probably like, ooh, this guy's got switch back hair. I'm, yeah. I'm on to him. So, yeah, yeah I, I even had bad hair then because I had, like, I'd slicked it back with, like, tap water from the thing. So my hair's a mess. Now like, you know how, like, that's probably how, like, like a lot of girls feel. Like, mm. Mm. walking around, around out. Like, they're just, like, they can't, they, like, have no power to do anything, right? And they're just, like, terrified. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've thought that. Because I've, I've, I've obviously said this story a couple of times and girls have said that it's like you know this is like when when we're in a club and we've got some lad chatting us up at the bar and he won't leave us alone like that's you know it's it's not it's not nice that would be a weird that would mean I mean, that would be weird to be to be a girl i know that's like a <laughs> like, that's like a that's like such a weird like oh let's talk about the famous people like could you imagine living a life where it's just like you're getting all this attention right mm. constant 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 and it, you're like just for like not even doing just for like walking into a place mm. like a celebrity and a decently attractive looking girl probably live pretty similar to their lives right mm. 
Like you don't have to be like, like crazy good looking as a girl to get a lot of male attention. Oh yeah. You know. And no, then, I mean, you, I've I've seen it first I mean, back in my like special boy TV days and stuff, and like I'd go out with like the casts and 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 we'd go to like, and they, and and they they were kind of like soap opera famous. Do you know what I mean? They weren't movie yeah. star famous. Um, but even. Even then, like the clubs that we go into, like it was all VIP areas. It was all like, you know, this kind of stuff. I hated it. I thought it was so boring. Like, but they, they like loved it. And you'd have like people coming up and like mithering them, and then you'd have like lads kicking off with them. Cause, you know, when they'd had a few drinks and they're trying to impress the girl they're with, so they're like coming over and like mouthing off and and you know all, all this kind of stuff. And it was just, it, I, I went out with them about two or three times, and then I, it was just, it was just boring. I mean, but I think you've got to have a certain mentality because they loved it. They loved like the VIP treatment. They loved like that they were like chained off from the peasants right. and yeah. all these people were looking at them and and, and all that. But I, I just wanted to like go and want, I wanted to play in the field. You know, what I, mean? I wanted to go around and court. just talk to people. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a weird that's a weird life to live mm. to be that like to get that much attention for not really doing much. Mm. And again, like. You look at a lot of these people on social media, they like doctor the shit out of their photos. Oh, and yeah. It's like, like face tuning and smoothing the skin and all. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, you don't look like that. Like, yeah. they know it. Yeah. They're not like, they know what they're doing, to, but yet they're getting all this attention mm. for being like revered for being gorgeous, yeah. but they don't actually look like yeah. that. And so I think that creates like this, this like friction between like reality and, and your mind that just like causes people to like implode. I don't think, and it causes them to do crazy things like get wild plastic surgery. Mm. Yeah, because they, they, they eventually want to look like the filter that they've made for themselves. Yeah, and then they also, they're so desperate to keep that young looking mm. because yeah. that's what they're built up yeah. on. Is, oh my God, look how good, like even Ryan Gosling, right? He's this mm. heartthrob. Have you seen it, that dude recently? He has like those cheeks fillers, you know what? Like, all right. Or he looks like odd. Yeah. They don't even look real, mm. and it's like not in a good way. It's a it's yeah. a weird thing that they try. I've said this before. The men who try to look younger, like doing like the unnatural weird things, mm -hmm. they end up looking like women, and the women yeah. end up looking like men. Yeah. And it's true. Like like look at like Mickey Rourke, Johnny Depp, Steven Tyler. Or they all look like old lesbians. Yeah, and then but they do, and the same with you're right with the women as well, because they, they always end up with like like Jennifer Aniston stuff. They, they end up with like really harsh yeah features because it it they look on that because you can tell some bits of them are old, and then it like you've got this like new bit added on and stuff, and it it doesn't sit right. Like Jennifer Aniston in Friends, like there's 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 not many women who have like looked like her. She she's attractive. I don't. I, she's obviously an attractive woman yeah. and friends. I don't think she's like drop dead gorgeous. No, but but she 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 had a look, and and especially at that time, she kind of had like that girl, was, girl next door. Yeah, kinda. yeah, she was like the the best version of the girl yeah. next door. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now she but looks, now like, like a, she looks she, like a frog now. Yeah, she looks she looks awful. Like they get the thing where like they're like they're like lips like open out. It's almost like yeah. the Joker smile. Yeah. like widens their smile and then dude, they're getting like just the craziest shit and i like i would bet a lot of money most of those people don't like if you saw them in person they don't look that good mm. like they're not that good looking people if you saw them face to face you'd be like oh like and they're banking on the fact that the majority of the time that you see them it's you're not going to see them in person you know most people wouldn't. i mean it, it must be um like just the normal Instagram people or, or, or like the original Facebook people and stuff who were using these filters, it must be depressing to take a photo of yourself yeah. and have to change yeah. it. Like you, you just just to just to show a load of strangers. That's what I'm saying. They know what they're doing. You yeah. know, like they're the ones doing it, or they're like their team or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like they're like shrinking in their waist and again it's not even just like celebrities like there's a dude on instagram who goes over like those fitness uh influencer people guys and girls all of them they're like making their biceps bigger and because he'll 
they'll do a thing where like if they're standing in front of a doorway mm. and you can see like the doorway will be like um warped yeah but yeah let her go yeah, yeah. It's, it's like you can see right there where that person like uh -huh. shrunk in their waist or made their shoulders big. it's just like and then then they're writing and all this like motivational stuff yeah. like don't care what people think and this it's just like like you're just like a fraud and it's it's like it's like a mental illness that that people have when they do that we basically made a meme of yourself on you i mean you you made you've made memes and stuff so you know like like the editing thing and like adding and, and moving things around so like that's what you've done with your face like you've you've made yourself into into like a caricature of yourself yeah um yeah but yeah i mean the first time you do it it might be you know a bit of fun or whatever but like by the 10th 11th time and you can't post just a normal photo you have to you have to filter it and that's the thing they can't it's like once you're the more you go down, it's like anything else. The more you go down that road, the harder it is to stop. Like the more you yeah. lie, the harder it's. And, it, and again, it's a form of lying. Like it's like digital lying, right? Once mm. you go down that road, you can't stop. You, the, the more you go on a bad diet, the more cocaine you do. You know, you do cocaine one night, okay. Yeah. You do it two nights, three nights, four. It's like, yeah, it's going to be harder to stop. So it, it's like an addiction that now, and again, like the, the confidence of these people must just be like in the gutters like they go out in public and like that's that's not you don't have your filter on mm -hmm. but they can do wild, wild shit with makeup though yeah. yeah well have you seen that my wife sends me these videos sometimes like where they, there's like a, a woman and then she she looks good and then you, you there's almost like a reverse thing and then they did like they like like false teeth and they they, they look like crack addicts like when they take it all off like everything is fake like they'll have like a wig on they'll have oh, yeah. like lashes or, like, yeah, yeah you know what i mean and, and but when, when you you see them they look like 20 years older i've seen that I've no seen teeth that. like that's terrifying like to like that's what you see in the morning like that's terrifying it's, it's, i mean that has to, that should be a crime be i think cause that, at least fraud like uh, or rape or it, whatever like it, it has to, it has to be. you're, you're yeah. selling something that's like it's like a defunct product like you know but yeah, they like if I bought they, a car and then got it home and it, like I bought a Ferrari and I get it home and the Ferrari body falls off and okay. it's just a Mitsubishi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like underneath, like I can sue the the car salesman. Yeah, exactly. Like exactly. But he's left town and he's on to the next thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it it is wild to see that because it, it's like two completely different people. Mm. And I I I give those people credit though because at least they're showing what they actually look mm. like. It's it's the it's it, it's it's such a wild and again the 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 stuff that specifically women put on their faces mm. and the creams and the sprays it's like that talk about toxic that stuff's like horrible for you um samoa says you all ever seen i'm gonna get you sucker i envisioned that scene in real life is that a movie i'm gonna get you sucker. Probably like some like I mean, it might be Sound of Music, I don't know, because that's, that's the only movie that someone poppy watches. Um, Creative Best said, I legit heard that from other dudes. It's an epidemic. It's false advertising to the millionth power. You can't trust it. I think it all started with the Wonder Bra. I think the Wonder Bra was the, the first bit of false advertising. And then it's just escalated from there. The Wonder Bra um, made your boobs look bigger yeah cool? because before the wonder bra you knew where you stood you, you knew what what was there you, do your you put a wonder bra there right? <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you, you you start talking to a girl who's got a wonder bra on and then you okay like and then tomorrow or, or whatever it's not real so the the wonder bra is responsible for all of social media i mean you're making a strong case it's just it's all it's that yeah it started with hair pieces tridents right it started with wigs the two um days, wigs. yeah um then it went to hair dyeing i mean it's just when is it gonna end yeah. um sign made to bear women will scrub their face and put chemicals on it to get rid of acne but at the same time they're causing it i know and yeah well acne is actually like acne is i mean acne is a good thing because it's just your body getting rid of the toxins and then the white pus which is white blood cells fat basically comes and surrounds it so it doesn't right. damage the skin so again it's not good that you're 
have all those toxins to get rid of, but it's good yeah. that your body is getting, it's getting rid of them. Yeah, it's like a cold. It's, it's like this, just another form of detoxification. But yeah, they, they douse themselves in just, just chemicals every day. Let's say if you look at, I mean, you just look at any makeup, you know, the, the stuff. I mean, we were talking about sun cream before. You know, think of all the, the products that women are putting on their faces. And men now, I mean, the, the, yeah. there's so many men now are just wearing makeup. And it's just not like there's ranges of men's makeup and not like faggy makeup, like just like advertised for like men's men. Yeah. Like, the, yeah, or it's like, oh, it's a cream for your, your husband's skincare routine. It's like, what? <laughs> like, are you like, and dude, there's like, it's now like becoming more and more popular to like paint your nails as a guy. Mm. Like the, the first, I know you probably don't follow the NFL, but the first pick in the NFL draft paints his fingernails. I'm pretty sure, I think he's gay, but. I think the NFL is gay. The I mean, NFL it's, it's is. Very... Football is not gay. The NFL is gay. I don't know because it's based on, or I'm presuming it was based on rugby. Um, it's like a form of rugby. but Yeah, but you're wearing helmets. You're wearing spandex. Yeah. You stop. Yeah, but they. You know. but so they then track, like running track is gay. Like those guys are in time. Like... No, but I'm saying Stand like. The is outdated. Yeah, but rugby players don't wear spandex. Rugby players don't wear shoulder pads. They don't wear helmets. Yeah, they don't. You know what I mean? They don't have that gay. level of protection. Shoulder pads aren't gay. So yeah. like, okay, it's, if jousting, those guys wear full metal outfits. Is that no, because it, no. But I'm saying if there was, so like, um, like boxing is a gay version of bare knuckle fighting. Right? Yeah, so you've got I, mean, bare... I see what you're saying, but. The word "gay" is strong. Gay in the uh, gay in the ninety sense, like so. Gay in like the the soft, weak sense. Oh, blame. Yeah, like because it just play rugby, just take all yeah. that crap off and but. Yeah, but, like, uh, but dude, like people who play rugby would say that it's that, like the way they tackle is that like huh. they don't hit hit as hard as they yeah. do. Yeah, but they can because they're wearing shoulder pads and that's protection. What I'm saying it's not like they're like pussies, like they're. I don't know. Dude, those dudes, like, you're not, they don't have, like, oh, they're getting CTE in rugby. Like, that was never a big thing. Like, the NFL, dude, those, those guys. Now, again, it's, it's, they've completely changed the rules. Now it's a mm. lot softer than, but, like, 10, 10 years ago, it was still pretty hardcore. Mm. Like, they went out there was that, and just destroyed each other. Is that a thing? Are they talking about, like, brain damage and stuff like that? And, and... They've been talking about, yeah, they made a movie with Will Smith right. about that. So you know it's you know it's legit now. Yeah, I mean it has to be. Yeah. No, they're doing the same with with proper football over here, like soccer. That's, that's, um, that stuff's definitely real. Like you get hit in the head enough times, oh, yeah. like, you're gonna. Yeah, but I mean you sign up to it though. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's part oh, yeah. of the. Oh, they do. They part do. of the agreement, isn't it? You know, it's like a boxer moaning that he's he's got brain damage. You know, what I mean? yeah. you you know what you're doing. I'm just saying it's not like it's not a soft sport. Like that's mm. like. Again, it's softer now. Like you can't even touch yeah. the quarterback. You can't. But like, you know, like do even basketball. Look at the '90s, '80s, '90s mm. for basketball. They were like putting out like clotheslines and mm. knocking dudes on the ground. Now it's like it's off the nest. But no, they're doing the same thing with with soccer, where they um the same head in the ball causes Alzheimer's. Um, it all came from one when England won the World Cup in 1966, right? So you. you, you most of the players are dead now. Um, one one of the daughters like sued the the FA, so like the like the NFL, like they, they sued the the organization because her father had Alzheimer's and he still was because he was heading the ball all the time. And so they did they, they got these like grabblers in and they they had a look at it and then they did a study and then they they're trying to outlaw heading the ball now because they're saying well yeah out of, out out of this group of like squad of fifty. People like six got Alzheimer's. So then, well, obviously it's because they were heading the ball, not just like that's the the national. The, the, I think the rate is actually lower than the national average. Yeah. Like getting Alzheimer's because they were all like fit physical uh, you know, <laughs> specimens, so they weren't getting Alzheimer's. Um, but he said that yeah, it, it was, it's because they're heading the ball. So they they banned it in like kids sports in kids football. I don't think you can head the ball up to like fourteen or something now. Um, is a really small sample size though. Yeah, I know. And, and you're talking about people who are dead. Do you know what I mean? So the sampling people who are dead 
um, just to do this this study, and then they're, they're like bringing all these like different regulations. It's just nonsense. It's just like, uh, yeah, but it's that interesting. That doing that That's crazy. Um, you got um, playing handball in a couple of years. Wobbly says, "Looks like stuntman hasn't seen some for years." I know I'm looking very pale today. It's part of that is my light, though. In my defensive, I move forward. I'm a bit more bronzed, um, and I am above like a a sand nigger. So he, he's going to make me look lighter. Uh, creative bear says, "Are we talking football or soccer? Proper football, creative bear. I, I believe the retards in America refer to it as soccer, but act actual football." Yet yeah, ours is still so. I'd say per capita way more popular. The one you can't play. The, the, the one that requires skill and tactical knowledge and patience, that, that game. Not just put a retard helmet on and run into each other. You guys are too soft to play. You got to play your little... Well, no, we don't, so that's why we don't use protection. We don't, we, yeah. we go in bare. We, yeah, we, you're, we, not, you're not, they, 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 they started flopping and then that's made its way into the NBA. You guys invented flopping. Flopping. There's nothing gayer than flopping. We um, I mean rugby. Rugby is gay, so the, the NFL has to be gay because rugby, rugby very Jewy flopping. Why? Why? Because it's like, oh look what he's doing to me. It's like they're like it's like the ADL. Like they're setting up this thing so that you feel bad for them, right? Yeah, but that's part of it, though. That's part of the thing. Like you've got to try and that's that's, 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 that's that's the point. It's not Jewy though. It's it's you should make the reason that, that it's not part of it, and that yeah, flopping is bad. It's really gay, but that's not soccer. But if you say it is soccer, then that just points to my point. It is now, unfortunately, and but there's, there's two. There, there is a legit reason for it, but there's also like a non-legit reason. Like yeah, the, the strategy, you want to get the guy a yellow card and a red card. Well, like part, that, but, part of it is just bad refereeing. So the the ref the, the way the referees do it is if it's um. If you're getting fouled, but you're still like on your feet, you're still continuing to to run or to continuing to to go for the ball or whatever. Nine times out of ten, the referee won't give a free kick. Um, yeah, but you can well, the yellow card, can't you? Well, I mean, it depends what the foul is. But you, so, I mean, if you're running, if you're you know, if you're having a breakaway and someone pulls your shirt or something like an obvious thing like that, then yeah, that's a that's a booking. But I was like, if you're if you're running through on goal and the defender is next to you and he's like tugging a little on your shirt a little bit and he's he's like shoulder charging and he's he's actually fouling you, but you're staying on your feet like because you're trying to score the goal, but you then miss the goal because of what he's you know what I mean because he's what he's doing has caused you to then miss. The referee won't give a foul, so you you kind of if you go to the floor, then the referee then has to make a decision. So the referee will, nine times out of ten, then give the foul. So, if you f so a lot of it's through bad refereeing. But. So if a guy fouls somebody mm -hmm. and he misses the, the shot, he won't call it? Not if, if Nine times out of ten, if the player's like stayed on his feet and actually tried to score or tried to pass or whatever, then the referee won't give a foul because he's saying, well, yeah, I know, but you still got your shot away. You still, you've still done that. Yeah, that that's that's ridiculous. So so the the but player will then think, well, if I don't go down, then I'm not going to get the free kick. So I'll go down. So there is that part of it, but there's also the cheating part, and, the, and the, they're trying to get people. Fair point. Was it always like that? No, it's it's last. But it, when they started bringing a lot of European players over and South American players, especially like so all the Brazilians oh, and yeah. the yeah. So when they started coming over, so like towards the end of the 90s, like 2000s. Because up until then, like the, the, all the leagues, like the English league was like 90% English players and same with German league and French league and stuff. And then the, the, there was a freedom of movement thing and all the, the players started moving. Um, but when the Europeans first started doing it in, in, in England, the, the, the England fan, the, the fans in the, the stadiums used to boo them. Like it was, it was a, like, because, you know, we, we don't do that. Um, even if it was your own player doing it so if your own player was like you know you had a brazilian player or something like that and he was going down too easily the the fans were booing because the, the like our mentality was no you, you you stay on your feet and you fight and you, you know that that kind of thing um and then we started seeing the advantages of it and thought okay well every time that lad's on the ball and he gets fouled we get a free kick so yeah okay like go to the ground really?
if you look at a dude like Ronaldinho, like that dude got like harassed yeah. and he's still staying on his feet. I mean, the best ones do, you know, Ronaldinho, Messi, you know, I mean, they, they will because they can. But then you get all the ones that aren't Ronaldinho who are trying to do Ronaldinho stuff. That it's e- easier for them to to fall down. But I can't watch soccer, but soccer highlights are good. Mm. I do like soccer. I'll give you that. I, I do get the I do get why Americans don't like it. Um, because a lot of your sports are very kind of like high scoring or or kind of like yeah the the, the you know basketball is at like one end to the other even the NFL and stuff like it's it's in it's in bits isn't it it's in segments so you'll have like a, a play and then one for like four seconds yeah so whereas football is is kind of like it's it's an hour and a half and it can finish nil nil and also you know, so for, I, I get for football it's like like so you have four chances to get go 10 yards like every play is very like it matters yeah you know it's not like soccer and like baseball it's like you draw it out you know it's like and then same with i didn't understand baseball at all i've watched it a couple of times now i've watched it i never got into baseball i've been i've been watching the dodgers twice and i i didn't get it i didn't like i don't i don't what I don't know what was happening. Like it was, it was just so like alien to me. Because when I when I go and watch the football, like it's you're all kind of sat close, and you know everyone's kind of on the same boat. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's just kind of like everyone's in it and stuff. Yeah. When I'm watching baseball, like everyone's just like wandering around. They're going to the shop in the thing. They're going and getting like so nachos, like flower seeds, and like yeah, yeah, yeah. it was just weird. And then, like they they play, they they do like. I don't know whatever it's called. Like, did you know someone would hit the ball, and then they'd stop it and start playing music, and then they had a jumbotron thing, and they'd start like just showing like a, a commercial. And so I was like, what? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? Well, going to the and game it was... is a lot better. I mean, if you try watching it on at home, like on your TV, mm-hmm. it's it's brutal. I I can't watch it. I could watch like mm-hmm. maybe some of a World Series game, mm-hmm. but just. Just like there's like there's like 182 games in a season or something like that. It's insane. Well, that's it. That's the other thing because we we weren't watching them, and then I think they were playing again though, like the next day. Yeah. And what what is, like do people just is that do people just go to like every game like is this a, a thing like do or is it kind of do people just go to like two or three games a year or something like but or, or is there someone who goes to 180 games and watches baseball? Yeah. Like, oh, I missed that one. Oh, I got 180 other chances to go. So, yeah. Like, there's no, like, urgency. No, it was, it was weird. And it went on. The first time we went, we had to leave. Because um, I think we'd, we'd landed, like, the day before. We were just all knackered. Like, we'd landed the day before or something. Like, my James was only, like, I don't know, maybe, like, 10 or 11 or something at the time. And it was, like, it was really late. We had to drive back to the place we were staying in. Um And... I think I think it went on until like midnight or something. It, it, it was like it, it went on really late. Um, yeah, it, it, it'll it'll just keep going if it's like, yeah. tied up and like it'll go past the nine innings. Mm. Go, like, and it was just a normal. It wasn't for anything. It was just a, it was the I think the, um, LA Dodgers against the Colorado Rapids. Is it Rockies? Yeah. Uh, Rockies. Yeah. Um, but it, it was for nothing. And then they played again like the next day or the, the day after or something. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't even matter. It's like, oh, yeah. we got, and then like the pitchers, it's like, okay, okay this guy pitched this on Tuesday. He's going to pitch in like two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. I think it's, and dude, those dudes get paid mm. so much. Mm. They have the high, I think, I think they're, they're probably higher than soccer players, aren't they? In terms of contracts? Yeah, because I think like, we are, we're always moaning about how much like footballers get paid and stuff. And then we see like what American sports people get paid. But soccer players get paid probably the second most under baseball I would say mm. and then I think it's basketball and then football and then like hockey I think the, the average at Liverpool because we, we, we're one of like the top payers obviously so the average at Liverpool is, is probably maybe like 200,000 a week so wow. whatever that is in what's that like 10 million a year yeah that's a lot of money um, like Salah's on like 350 a week, 350,000 a week. I think Van Dyke's on around that. But and then but then you've got other people in the same team who are on like 20 grand a week. Um, um so it, it, it but I'm, I'm 
I'd say we're probably like the fourth highest, fourth or fifth highest probably players in the league. I think Man City obviously pay their players like ridiculous. Like Haaland's on like half a million pound a week. Like like stupid money. Well, then you, have, you have the NFL. They have 53 guys on the roster. So they have mm. a lot more to spread out. So the quarterback is going to get the most. And like a wide receiver and a left tackle and then you know, a defensive player. But the rest of them, they're not making like, like crazy, crazy mm. money. The mm. Basketball players make a shit ton of money. What's the tax like there? Is it because I think it's like forty five percent of the tax for footballers? For in where you are? Well, just on higher the the rules because we have the our tax rates. Um, it's 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 daft the way they do it. Like up to I think you can earn like fifteen thousand thousand a year or something and you don't pay tax on it and then after that you pay 22 percent of your wage as tax uh-huh. up to i think it's forty thousand. and then if you earn more than forty thousand a year you pay 45 percent of your wage tax so obviously footballers are, are paying 45 percent. so if you're earning 10 million you're only taking home like whatever it is six and a half, uh, five and a half um did, did messi have tax evasion well in Spain, it was different. So what Spain used to do was the it was basically like it wasn't tax free, but the clubs had like an agreement where they like overpay and then get it back at the end of the year and stuff. So a lot when they were trying to build the Spanish league up, so because for years Real Madrid and Barcelona and stuff they were they were nothing like they were as far as like winning stuff in in Europe and everything. So they plowed the, the government, the Spanish government, they plowed a load of money into it and made a load of like concessions so they could get all the best players to go there and pay them. You know, double what they were earning in their own countries because they weren't paying tax. Um, and then they changed the rules, and Messi was kind of like, "Well, no, I'm so not paying it wasn't tax." Like purpose, purpose. Well, it was because it, 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 I think it like for the first couple of years that he would have been there, then it was like that, and then they changed it, and he just didn't agree to that, <laughs> whatever, and just like, nah, knew, like I'm not paying. Tax. He knew what he was doing. Yeah, I mean, he, I think he. It, I'm not saying he got away with it, but he certainly hasn't paid back what he what he owes. But they, they were they were really strict because Italy used to do the same thing, and then they were really strict with it. And a lot of um, a lot of players just like left, just like like literally left, like left the country because they owed that much in tax. Oh, really? Oh. Um, so they just like tore the contracts up and just went home. But They're now Messi uh, in, um, in Miami just raking it in. I always forget he's kind of still playing. Yeah, I mean, well, he, he's got what? Well, he's like late thirties, mm. mid late thirties. That's the thing. I don't understand how how the MLS is like taken off, really, because I don't, the standard I don't, of football can't be. You know what I mean? If if he can still be one of the best players at that age, I don't think it is. I think maybe it is taken off, but no one follows it. Mm. Like. They're probably pump, pump, uh, pumping a lot of money into mm. it, but I don't know. Like, because you tried a few times, haven't you? You tried like I remember when I was a kid, like with with the, like Galaxy with David Beckham was like the first. Well, before that though, because they used to like because like Pele was playing there, and and you know all, all these kind of play like Bobby Moore went over there and stuff like. So you you tried to do it in the seventies, and they tried to make the MLS thing because they had the uh, New York New York Cosmos, I think they were. Um, and they, they tried to do it and it never took off and then it kind of like died off and then you had the World Cup there in 94 and I think you tried to like boost the league again after that um, yeah I was choosing to host in the World Cup in 94 so you, um, and then you did the whole, whole like LA Galaxy thing again do you know I mean? with, with Beckham and Gerard and Ibrahimovic and stuff well they just get them when they're all washed up so. yeah but that's what I mean, so I don't understand why anyone would would kind of bother watching it. But if you're if if you're saying like no one does, then it's understandable. I mean, no one I no one I know does. <laughs> like any of the sports programs, they don't they don't cover it really. Oh, I mean, there's we go on. We have the like the preseason tours and stuff. So you know, before when you get your fitness and stuff. So we, and we we alternate like where we go. So we'll do like China, and then we'll go to Australia, then we'll go to America or whatever. So there's we're going to America this year. Whenever whenever we go to America, like the stadiums are 
packed. Do you know what I mean? Uh, with the, like with Liverpool shirts or, or whoever we're playing, like the, I think Liverpool, Man United, Arsenal. I think are all going over to America this year for like a pre-season tour, and it will it'll be a sellout everywhere. Because um, the Bandit Bears in here, I think. Where did you go and watch them, Ted? Was it in Detroit? Um, and he paid a fortune for this. So the tickets were like uh, like more expensive than they are here. I could be out of the loop. Maybe I just I don't follow it. So maybe, <laughs> but I I don't know. I don't really think I don't know. I, I know like, like they help they'll show like LeBron James going to the game and like. Mm. You know all these celebrities being there and getting stake in the teams and stuff. So it probably is a lot bigger than I'm mm. than I think it is. But I just, I don't don't think it'll ever take off. Yeah, the I can't. Bands of Michigan. So yeah, so a, a preseason tour in Michigan, and it, it it's all it, it's like a proper sellout, and it's what is it, like an so the tickets are, exhibition game. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, so it's a nothing. It doesn't mean anything. It's it's just a fitness thing. Um, you know, so we can prepare for the season. Because we they used to like just do they used to just play local teams and they saw there was money to be made like by going to China and going to America and and kind of boosting the brand. Um, right, Ted says it cost me something like five hundred dollars for four of us. Uh, we sat behind the nets, not even good seats. Wow. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying it's that's more expensive than I pay to go and watch them at, at the ground. Um, but the, you know, so there is there is like a, a thing for it, but maybe it's just for foreign clubs or something i don't know maybe there's like affinities to to certain things like and so that the national thing doesn't really take off well ted just outed himself and he has to pay at least 500 dollars in gay away so that's fun ted outed himself a few weeks ago when he said the last time he was in liverpool he did the beatles tour what's that um well so way so you like retrace the steps of where the beatles like live across the the, the road where the yeah, and you you see you go to the cavern and you go to like you go, um Eleanor Rigby's grave and and all this. So that's um that's out and he's doing the doing the Beatles tour is like one of the gayest things I've ever heard. So back to Boomers talking to the Beatles. Um, this has been like my favorite topic I think out of all the weeks we've had. What, I think, um, yeah, I think, I think Boomer anything Richard. to do. Yeah, it's very cathartic. Mm. It's, it's fascinating how many people are just like come out of the woodworks and like, dude, I got a story about a boomer for you, because everyone does. Everyone's interacted with a boomer, and you're just like, you really, really are just delusional. Yeah, like they're, like it's it it literally is the world just revolves around them, and that's how they think. Um. The band says, I did go to London and walked across the road and took a picture. I mean, you're just out just stop. yourself at this just point. Just stop. You should, you should stop commenting. You're really racking up. So you went to Liverpool and London and did Beatles stuff in two cities in England, like 300 miles apart. And you live in Canada and you're Hungarian. Well, there's just like, there's very little hope. That's, that's horrible. Yeah, Wobbly says you have to share that picture. I, I hope you were you were barefoot when you were doing it. Yeah, well, like, that's, what, that's what I was thinking. Like dead Paul. The fake Paul McCartney. Um, Abbey Road for the win. Oh, dear. It's a good job you, you live in the middle of nowhere, Ted, because otherwise you, you'd be at gay clubs every night. That, um, that's, yeah, why, I, that's why they go to truck stops. Why do, um, why do you think the boomers are like that? Um... I think I think it's a mixture of I think everyone can be a boomer like that, right? It's obviously it's a behavior, yeah. right? So it's not just these people born between this yeah. time, but I think they had kind of like the perfect cocktail of they had they had a again, we've all had a lot of science, but they had a lot in the sixties, mm -hmm. the moon landing, Manson, L S D, Woodstock, yeah, all that stuff, right? Kennedy getting shot. Going to the moon, um, mixed with an insanely easy life in terms of like the economy and all that came about with that. So you put those two together on top of like human nature, where you can mm -hmm. just easily trail off into that. I think that's what it, what made them like that. 
Do you think it was? Um, do you think it was deliberate? I mean, I know some of it was obviously like you know the, a lot oh, yeah. of the sixties stuff. And, yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of them were obviously deliberate. But I mean, do you think? Do you think they wanted the outcome that they've got, where where, where it kind of like it, it almost destroyed the next two gen or, or affected the next the next two generations after them? See, or do you I think that's just they just I got lucky? I think they're they're thinking. I don't know. Maybe. I don't think they're thinking that far ahead when they're doing it. Mm. I think like with the Fed and like the economy, because that's basically what it comes down to. It's like pretty much all economics. They're just yeah. trying to like kind of keep this thing going, mm. right? And so, you know, they go they go off the gold standard and they're just kind of like patching it together. Now, I don't think they're out of like, I don't think it's like, oh, the Fed has no idea what they're doing. I think they know exactly what they're mm -hmm. doing. But I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're like, oh, we're going to, make it horrible for the next generations. I just think, because like, I, like me, and I'm sure you and most bears are like super excited about the future. So it's mm. like you could, I think it all just comes down to like your your outlook, right? So a lot of people are like, oh man, it's going to be so bad. You can't get a house. You can't do this. It's like, all right, well, we'll, we'll just find another way to do it. And so, yeah, I don't know if I really answered the question, but I, 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 don't, I don't think, it's i don't think it was deliberate by the fed I, you, you don't think they're looking like 60 years in advance or anything i think it, they it, do but then they don't like I, I do think there are there is that where it's like century-long plans right uh -huh. but i think it's i think it's like bigger macro things of like control than it is like down to like the generation of like yeah. now i think they could pro probably see that if they can continue down this path and you know taking out loans and and that houses are going to go up and things will get more expensive you know mm. the main things will get more expensive i think they could see that but i don't know i just don't think there are, there are obviously bad people at the top you know you get to the top it's like safe mm -hmm. right but i i don't know i don't I don't think i think at the end of the day like if you if we were able to like talk to like have a truthful conversation with a lot of people in like the Fed or, or whatever. It is. I don't think there is like spooky, scary as, mm -hmm. as a lot, a lot of truthers make them out to be. Who do you think they are? Like, do you think there is like just a a group of they, or do you think there's almost kind of like different arms to it and stuff? Because we look at it, I mean, England and America are basically the same place, you know, we're run by the same people, we're run on the same rules and stuff. So we look at it like that, but then you've got the rest of the world that's not, do you know I mean, there's more of the world that's not like us than, than yeah. us. And, and they're under the, you know, similar levels of control, but obviously in different ways. So do you think there's like an overarching they who are controlling the world, or do you think it's kind of like branched off. So like you control that bit, you control that oh, bit. You're saying like the countries are, are they all connected at one? Yeah. Time? Yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's more along the lines of like, there's no, um, no otter amongst thieves things mm. where they, I think if, if you're at that tippy top, whatever it is, they don't like, they don't like each other. Like they're, mm. they're more paranoid and whatever than, than most people. Now I think, they probably are like extremely smart and know a lot, right? Like Gardner talks about like millionaires use whatever and billionaires use the, the basically talking about reading the stars. Um, mm -hmm. So I think they know a lot, but I don't think, so I think it's like, yeah, yeah, like the stuff with like Russia, it is real to a, to a degree, but they're mm -hmm. also working together. Like I do think they don't like Trump, a lot of people, mm -hmm. but then again, they do do like it's like yeah. i just think there's factions on both sides and they're <clears throat> and they're constantly warring with each other to gain power i don't think like if you're if you're like the type of people to want to be in that position are never satisfied mm -hmm. and they just want more and more and more just expand expand it's like a jeff bezos but even on a way higher level mm -hmm. they're not going to be satisfied with just being content like oh, oh i have this they're, they they want to take out that person they want to just to keep expanding until they're the ruler. But then you have all these other people coming after them. And then again, like you get to the top, it's like a spiritual thing. So it's, I don't know. What do you, yeah. what do you think? I mean, I think that, I think that there has to be levels to it. Um, just to, 
Just, just like logistic wise, I think there has to be levels to it because you you can't you you know a group of people I don't think can control the world because there's so many different you know every, everything cultures religion morals you know uh, uh, there's so many different things that you can't possibly use the same brush for everyone so that has to be then arms off it but uh, whether they answer to an overall kind of they I, I, I don't know um, or whether it is just areas of the world control their own things but I mean I, do, I don't know if it's if it's that they want more stuff or they're, the, they're just that terrified that someone's going to come and take their stuff that they kind of like attack instead of defend do you know what I mean like uh, you know so, so so like a Russia thing or whatever, you know, whether they're that paranoid about Russia that they then attack Russia. And it's not because they want Russia. It's because, you know, they don't want Russia to attack them. Um, but I don't know. I just, before Corona, I would have said, like, it has to be different bits because it's not possible. But the way that the whole world kind of acted the same way and went along with it, no one spilled the beans on it. No one said, like, we're not doing this or, or whatever. Everybody pretty much did the same stuff. Um, so they have to, there has to be something, someone or, or whatever that they're answering to or that's setting the rules or whatever. Um, so whether that's financial, whether it's whatever the, whatever the incentives are to, to go along with it. Um, yeah, I think, I think there is, like, they do agree to things like the Na mm -hmm. like the Antarctic Treaty or COVID mm -hmm. or something like that, where they know that it's like okay, this is for the good of all of us in, uh. in their minds. But I I have a hard time thinking or believing that at the top they're just like happy being oh, yeah. with these other people, like whoever these people are, whatever it is. Like I I would think that they would probably hate them uh. right and they would want to be the one so they're just uh. constantly playing this this, yeah. this like grapple game i mean they, they have to be because if you're that type of person to do that in the first place you know you have to have that mindset of, of if you hate you you must i, I don't know you mu you must hate people like as a group mm. to be able to control them in such a way um, for your own benefit or for your own ease or for your own agendas or whatever. So, yeah, I think if you've got 10 of those types of people in a room, then they are going to be, you know, against each other. They are they are going to resent what the other one has. They are going to be fearful of what the other one has or whatever. Um, but, it, like I say, logistic-wise, it's just it's such a big thing to be doing. It's hard to imagine. Imagine like how many people you'd need to do it. Yeah, that's why. I mean, again, it it, it really does come down like the spiritual level. I, I, that's why I'm saying like mm -hmm. I I think these people are guided just like anyone can be guided by like greed and mm -hmm. lust or whatever it is. Now they they are in those positions and they might quote unquote like know more, but on a level. I think like we may know more than those people in terms of like the like what's important in life. Like they, uh -huh. they may know more in terms of like overall. Yeah, the secrets of the universe. Yeah, whatever, the yeah. secret knowledge and stuff yeah. like that. But in terms of like how you should live your life, I would say we're more on the we're closer to the truth. Than they are. It's like I was saying today about the, the people on the, the, the billion dollar yacht or whatever looking at the, the rednecks and the, the party boat. You know, they, they maybe they look at us like that. Maybe they, they look at like the freedom that we have that they don't have or the the, the free will that we seem to have that they, they can't have and almost kind of envy us. I don't know. Yeah, and I think the uh, the more you more you take that ticket or move away from, oops, uh, um, the more you move away from, like the path that God wants you to be on. It's you're you're like fighting. It's like you're fighting against like the current. 
It's like mm. you're trying to like sweep up all the water in the ocean. You're you're never going to be able to do it. It's just going to get harder and harder. And so I think. Do you think they've always been there? Or, you know what I mean? Like, relatively speaking. So, I mean, nobody has a clue about history. Like, nobody has a clue, like, when we came here, when we started it. Do you know what I mean? Like, no one, no one has any idea at all. But say, for argument's sake, that humans have been around for 10,000 yeah. years. Yeah. Do you think, like, on year one, there was, like, the gravelers then set up or do you think they only came like in the last 200 years or, do you know what i mean like have they, have they always been around I, or, or yeah it... i think that i yeah i, I yeah I, I do think it, it was mm. if there were if there were enough people there yeah i think there will always be that because i think it's it's like more in like your heart like anyone mm. can be that yeah that's why like the like you know kill your inner jay is like so powerful because it's like, like you can like you can be that everyone has that in them mm. right now you can be greedy and angry and like the seven seven deadly sins are so spot on like you you have the ability to do that at any moment and the second that mm. you think you're over it is the second that they got mm. you is the second that those mm. whispers are like right yeah. on like denzel washington for whatever he is he does say some good stuff and he was saying talking about like the like the devil it's like when you're at your lowest he's got you but when you when you get to your highest and you think that you're good it's like yeah yeah he's that that's when he's really got you because you think you're over it and you're you really are never over it i wouldn't like it's it's always that you always have to try and like for lack of a better word like do the right thing right mm -hmm. pursue because i believe there's objective truth in everything like yeah. everything whether it's you know down to like how you move or like how you're supposed to live your life on that day or like in mm -hmm. every single situation there's always a right answer right and, and I, th I think there's like especially in like you know like that libertarian movement it's just kind of like oh do whatever you want there's just it's like no there is the like rules will like set you free mm -hmm. obviously you can have corrupt rules but the the more strict you are in your life and if you are actively and, and honestly pursuing the truth then i think i think you will, will be led on the path that will free you but it's mm. it's more, more restrictive you have more responsibility but you know it, it does free you in a way or it frees you i mean again going back to we're going back to corona it didn't take that many people to push an agenda because like you said, everyone's got it within them to, to act that way. So, I mean, uh, uh, I'm assuming America was similar to England where, where the, the kind of the rules were quite vague from, from the top. You know, there, there was the whole, like, you know, social distancing and, you know, wear a mask and you can't hug your granny and all that. But ultimately, like, on a on a day-to-day -day basis, the rules are very vague. And then people enforce them. And people enforce them in the way that they saw fit. So whether it was, it was through fear or whether it was a power trip or, or or whatever it was but people were very kind of strict in like stores and you know that kind of thing mm. but they each one of those didn't get the memo from the grappler yeah do you mean they, they just got like an overall thing and said like okay run with it and it were it was that kind of like voice inside of them or, or whatever that was them making them treat other people completely differently than they would have done last week um and the ones that didn't do that, and you know, and we, you know, stayed strong or stayed free or, or whatever. Um, ultimately, you you end up winning, you know, because we did we didn't spend a, we didn't spend two years in fear. We didn't spend two years particularly changing the way we lived our lives, yeah. and we we didn't inject ourselves with questionable substances <laughs> that that may or may not kill us. Yeah, well, it's, it's like it's like. Uh... You like the Dark Knight? I'm sure we talked about that. Do you like that movie? Not, not really. I'm not. I'm not really into comic books. Yeah, I'm not twelve. But... Tommy, dude, that's like one of the greatest movies ever. The it, writing in that movie is phenomenal. Anyway, do you have you seen it? You've seen that movie? I may, maybe I've I've seen a couple of them. I don't know which is which. If you I've seen, seen I've seen the clips Batman. that I went to. You can that's watch that's the basically movie. Christopher Nolan Batman movies if you haven't seen them. Anyway, the scene at the end with the Joker and he's got the Batman. Mm. And he's talking, or the Batman has him, he's like hanging from the thing upside down. And he says, 
madness is like gravity all it takes is a little push and that, that's all it is they all they have to do is give you a little push of six feet fear and they just kind of whisper it out there uh -huh. and then it goes into these people it's like people almost made it up in their mind right people uh -huh. allowed that that fear you could call it demonic thoughts whatever it is sent out from up above on, on the hill and then that started everything right so people had to take the ticket all from just a little bit of a push uh -huh. That's all it was. I think it served their own agendas as well because I think everyone kind of took their own thing from Corona and even the people who didn't wear masks and, and didn't consent and all that. There was a certain group of those who were doing that for the power struggle. Yeah, yeah. Like they were, you know, and they were filming themselves going into stores and you know, being confront uh, confrontational and all that. You're doing the same thing as they're doing. Yeah. You know, it's exactly and you're doing it for the same reasons you're doing it for the power or you're doing it for the whatever you know you even a lot of that was out of fear so the the, the corona people are scared that there's a bug going around that's going to kill them and the the people who are so anti-mask and so anti this who are going up and confronting them they're scared that their freedoms are going to be taken away that their lives are going to be changed that the, the new normal is coming and all, or all this crap so you you you're both doing the same thing for the same reasons, but you you kind of opposite sides of the of the, the the coin or whatever. But the ones who stayed true and and it was it was just a, such a simple life. It was such an easy way to to do it that I'm surprised more people didn't do it. More, but it, it must just have tapped into whatever whisper helmet they were wearing. You know, whether it was fear, whether it was power, whether it was conformity whether it was you know whatever whatever it was i was so surprised at like how quickly everything happened and people like that you knew who you thought you could rely on or thought you thought similar to you yeah. just like overnight it just turned into like completely different people and then and now they've forgotten it ever existed it did fall into place very quickly and you know like you were talking about like it was happening on both sides it's like yeah part of me was like Oh, I'm so much better because I don't, you know, yeah. I didn't wear the mask. And there is truth, like, well, again, like there is objective truth. There is a yeah. a right and a wrong thing to do. Uh -huh. I obviously think that, you know, fighting against that was the right thing to do. Um, but you can, you can get into that like truth or arrogance mode where it's like uh -huh. I'm so much better, you know, than these like sheeple or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Like it's it's easy yeah. to fall into that. And yeah, like just you know, just even in like my life, I. Was, I remember like talking to like my mom and my brother and all of them. It's like, don't take it. Don't take it. It's poison. My mom's like, oh, it's not poison. It's not poison. I was mm -hmm. like, don't do it. Don't take it. And thankfully, none of them took it. The only person who took it, he's taken quite a few, is my dad. But, um, but like my mom, my brother, and my sister, they didn't take it. And it's like, again, I guess it's kind of like bad on me to like want that. Like, oh, you were right. You know, yeah. there's like part of me that like wants them, yeah. you know, to say that. But, and my brother, my brother has, has like said that, but the other, it's like, I would feel like, like if I was like about to do something and they were like, don't do it, don't do it. And later mm -hmm. it came out that they were right. I'd be mm -hmm. like, you were right, you know, yeah. but yeah, that's exactly. not good that I, part of me wants that, but there, there is, there is that. Can't say that no, and I, I was the same because I had the same conversation with my parents, same kind of struggles with them at first. We were. I'd go around and see him and I had to stay in the driveway and all, all this kind of nonsense. Yeah. Um, but luckily, they, they, they listened to me and stuff. But even now, like, they, you know, they, they would fall for the next thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and they, they, you haven't learned from it. Like, they're still talking about government. They're still talking, you know, just as boomers do. Like, they're still, like, obsessed with all that kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, I was, I was the same. Like, when, when it first started, like, I'm, when I was walking into places, I was ready for confrontation. Like I wanted the confrontation. I wanted to like, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to, I'm going to like, you know, put you in your place for telling me to wear a mask and all. like I wanted all that. And then like after like a couple of weeks, something like, why, why do I want this? Like why do I, why do I want my life to be to have this in it? Like I don't, I don't want anything to do with it. And, yeah. And then once you do that, it's just far easier. And you can, you can then do that with most of the tricks they're trying to do. And you get to a point where it's like you've reached that level where you almost have like sympathy for for people, yeah. 
Like, I think, I think like the ultimate is again, not excusing behavior or anything like that. And certain people need to be taken out, whether it's like, a, you know, pedos and whatever, but yeah. you can sympathize and be like, I can see that. that right. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, it's easy for me to, like, I listen to that Matt Cox's podcast a lot and just some of the stories they tell from the inmates and some of the criminals that come on there and tell mm. their stories. It's like, I didn't have a child childhood like that like my mom wasn't like selling me for sex or doing crack yeah. and having me shoot up meth at 10 years old like i didn't go through any of that so it's eat mm -hmm. again everyone has a choice and the older you get you know but it's it's very easy to sit back and just be like oh that's it's like but i didn't i didn't have to go through that thankfully grateful yeah. for that you know and um but again that it's it's not excusing behavior there has to be rules and to you know structure a society um no, I mean, every, everyone can think of, I mean, not like that, but every, everyone can excuse away bad behavior, and they always do. I mean, it, it, if you got pulled over for speed and you'd come up with an excuse straight away of why yeah. you were speeding, yeah. Yeah. you know, so every, everybody can do it. Um, and for some people, it's going to be harder to break that cycle and, and to break away from it and stuff, but ultimately, your life will be so much better if you do. Um, and that message isn't shown very i mean that's what makes the bear so good and, and owen and stuff so good because that's the message that we're pushing you know to, to to kind of break the cycles to stop the trauma to you know to, to to go back to basics and so much of the other stuff is 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 pushing trauma it's put and, and even in like small ways you know it's pushing insecurities it's put it's it's preying on your weaknesses and stuff um but yeah everyone's got responsibility it's, you know it's it's their you decide how you're going to live your life, you know, and especially as, a, as an adult. I mean, you can excuse away like a 10-year-old who's had a bad upbringing who then does something that they shouldn't yeah. do. As an adult, there's no excuse. Yeah. You know, you, you can still have trauma and you can still have flashbacks and nightmares and all that. It doesn't mean you have to go out and then do that to somebody else. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and you it's know, like so you, you can always choose the right path. And you hmm. may not know exactly what it is but i think that's that's like the one thing is like again i would say like if you're pursuing a relationship with god like are you are you asking yeah. for that you're asking for the guidance and the wisdom and all that like do you actually want it or are you just saying that because of yeah. like on an instagram post or whatever like are you actually doing that and it's again it's every single day yeah. it's not that's why the whole like when he was doing that flat earth debate with that guy and he i'm pretty sure he was like the the past pastor uh, turtle shell he was yeah. He was like, oh, yeah, you know, you just you believe once and then you're good. It's like, like, that's not the way I see it. I think it's like an every single day thing. Yeah. Now you can have like an overall, you know, uh, perspective on stuff. But every single day you have to make those choices and continue to work at it. It's yeah. like a diet or anything else, a relationship. It doesn't just end like, it's, like that. That is the beautiful thing is that you get to do it every single day. It's not that you have to. You get to do it. You get to improve every single day, no matter what it is. And that's that's the thing, and it's, it's going to be like that until the day that you die. You know, it just it just is what it is. It's like your your gay ankle stuff. I mean, your for that to work, you have to you have to commit to it, don't you? You have to do that. You can't just change the way you stand once. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not. I'm, I am having a dig, but I'm also not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I am. I am being genuine with it. Like you, you, you can't like just right now. I'm fixed now because I stood yeah, right yeah. once. Yeah, yeah. And then tomorrow we'll go back, back to standing like a yeah, retard. Yeah. You know, you, you've got to, you've got to do it. it. It just has to be the way you live your life, almost to the, you know, to the point that you, you, you're not, you're not thinking about yeah, it. Exactly. And that's why, yeah. I mean, that's why it's like everyone, like, like with the movement stuff. It's like, why are these dudes in the Amazon rainforest who have never sat in a chair? Like they're just, like they're like the ideal way to move, right? Yeah. They're. Why is that? Everyone Everyone has that ability. It's just uh -huh. they just live a life that there's nothing compressing their body, yeah. right? You know, they're not driving cars and doing all that stuff. So it's it's not that they can't become subjective to it. You can be, right? It's not that, you know, either one, one of us couldn't go out and murder somebody. That technically could happen, uh -huh. right? Now, it could be a lot less likely based on how we were raised and brought up and, yeah. and whatever else. But, you know, anyone can cheat on their wife. Anyone can, you know cheat on their taxes or do do whatever it is steal or you know whatever you have that in you and that's 
that's not like a that's not like a Jordan Peterson like oh I'm a monster and you everyone's a monster it's just, it's not that it's just it's knowing that like you can you can choose wrong I think is like yeah. the easiest way to put it. you can choose the bad path but you you get to choose the right path yeah I mean say like if you're driving a car you you at any point could just steer into oncoming traffic yeah. but you, you you don't <laughs> do you know what I mean and so there's a reason that you don't and it's self preservation because you you don't want to hurt yourself, you don't want to die. But then, during your life, you will do so many things that put you in danger, whether it's short term or long term, and you know, damage your your psyche, damage your mental health or whatever. You know, and and you will you will you will do all these things that that give you a crappier life intentionally. Or do you know what I mean? Or you won't intentionally not do that. And that's what that's what people need to change you know what i mean they, they need to because they, because they'll do that and then say oh my life's crap and that, that's why i do this no you your life is crap because you do that it's a, it's not you know what i mean it, it it works the other way like if you change this your life won't be crap like it, that's not an excuse for you to do this they're using it as, as like a crutch mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like i i used to smoke weed every single mm-hmm. day and mm-hmm. i i haven't smoked in in years and years thankfully i stopped doing it but i got to the point where i was like Hmm. Every time I run out, like I'm irritable. Mm. Uh, you know, I can't sleep. I'm not hungry, right? You don't dream, and like mm. so. For me, it was just like I, I'm I'm reliant on that, and then that's a, the same way it was with alcohol. Mm. I stopped mm. drinking alcohol years ago. It's like I don't, you know. Yeah, obviously, you know, you get a couple of drinks in you, and you go to the bar, and you're gonna be a little funnier, right? You're gonna be a little mm. more charismatic. It's easier to go up and talk to the girl and everything, but it's like. I want to be able to get to that level without that. Mm. Like if, if, you know, again, you're just relying on something to, yeah. to get you where I think you can naturally. I think you're back now. Yeah, did it come back? Yeah, that was just a. Yeah. My battery. So. Um, yeah. No, no, it's 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 true. You don't you don't need these things, but it's easier to have them, and then and people don't want the the struggle. Do you know what I mean it's easier to put a mask on? It's just an easy life. It's just and and they don't want to not do it because it's the wrong thing to do. It's easier um, short term. Yeah, but that's it. I mean, and and I mean, I I I don't I don't drink a lot, but like Friday Saturday, I'll I'll have, you know drinks and we'll, we'll, we sit down we'll, we work through like tv series and stuff like that um and you just justify it even though i know it's bad for you know for it, it's not it's not the best way to live like i justify and think well you know i don't drink during the week and it's, it's only at the weekends and it's only you know it's, it's the only thing i do and you know all this kind of thing and you you, you do you justify it to yourself um but i, I, I don't know I, I suppose we all have that kind of like this the, uh, we could all give up something. Do you yeah. mean we could all stop something? We could all change something. You know, and then where where do you, where do you then draw the line? Do you mean at what point do you like? I don't know. Yeah, I suppose I'm not, if I'm not against uh, like I'm not against like people drinking or whatever. Uh-huh. You know, I, I don't I don't personally do it, but I you know I don't I don't care if people drink. I think you know like Owen would say it's like like getting drunk or like like are you saying like it's a good thing to always be drinking yeah. now if somebody wants to have a drink every now and whatever it is then then that's fine but, but um, i mean i used to i mean i used to be out all the time like up to like i said like up to me and my wife basically like so up to like mid-20s like, i was like pretty much like every night i was out and then but, but again you justify it because it's it's kind of like it's it's what english people do we all just go to the pub every night we all you know we and we all go out with the weekend and we you know the, we go on holiday we all find the nearest bar um but then when you stop and you realize you're like i, I don't actually need that yeah you know what i mean but um how about vaping <laughs> give it up Charles. yeah that's a good point <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It is it, like I said. Alcohol is my only thing. That's my only thing. <laughs> so there's, there's, I've got, I've got two only things. It's like a safety blanket. Yeah, 
I, I, it, it is just a habit because I, I was smoking from when, when I was like 15, something like that, up to 30, 30 probably later than that. Um, yeah, so and and so it is just that hand to mouth thing. It's just that, and and the, the like the hit on the back of your throat. So it 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 could be anything. It could be it could I could just be like anything that would give me that. Like and uh, not anything, not a cock. Like but anything that okay. anything that would okay. anything that can hold in my hand, put in my mouth, and I can feel it at the back of my throat. But see, I never um, did cigarettes because, like the first time, I probably smoked maybe a full cigarette my entire life but like I, I like it's not enjoyable the first time you do it mm, no no you have to force yourself to like that's what it. i'm saying like so like, at least like with weed it's like you do you can, can get like a euphoric feeling from like your first mm. hit like you do kind of get yeah. something with with cigarettes it's like you just hit it and it's like super harsh and it mm. smells and it's like See, I, I guess just people will just stick around to it enough that it becomes a habit. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's for for the majority of the time, it's horrible. Do you know what I mean? Like, I guess, like throughout, because any smokers will know. Like, if you if you've been out the night before, so you've had a lot more than you, you usually would. You wake up in the morning, you you're like coughing up black stuff and everything. Like the that. You you need that first one of the morning almost, and it, you 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 say it's like to clear your lungs, like you have a cigarette to clear your lungs, because then that smoke goes in, and it, you you, you kind of like bring it up a bit and you know spit it out or whatever. Oh my gosh! So that, that's what I'm saying. It's not it's not a fun experience. <laughs> you know what I mean, like it's there's but, like out of a pack, people... pack of twenty, there's maybe one you really enjoy, like the other nineteen are just like you just smell and you spent money. Like I have friends who smoke, and it's like. Like they'll do it like after like uh, after they eat and they're like oh so nice it's just like yeah. is it the, like I I'm not saying it's not I'm, I'm just saying I don't I don't understand it yeah I mean again that's that throat thing though because it's it, it I suppose it's because you're so used to it when when you've eaten and stuff it it takes away like the the feeling in your throat so then you need to put it back in so then you you have the, the cigarette and it puts like that lovely tar coating on you. Throw again, like so you can. But what is it about eating things. after? What is what is it about smoking after you eat? That's, that's what I mean. I think when you're eating, you're getting all these different tastes and stuff in your mouth, and then and then and you you throw that it's the taste of the 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 cigarette has gone, so you have to like put it back in. So it's just pure like addiction to the actual. Yeah, yeah. it's it's the it's the, it the, the their stomach or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, it's hard to explain if, if like. If you haven't, you know what I mean. It's hard to yeah, explain if you haven't yeah. felt the thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of the time, which again, one of the problems with that is when you when you smoke, it tends to like rubber stamps, and it's like it's like a not saying, but it's like it's like me time. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, it's like yeah. for this next two two minutes, like I'm I'm doing this. Um, you, you know, so you uh, like you watch a movie and then you'll have a cig, or you'll have a meal and then you'll have a cig. You'll have a, a a lunch break and you know you know what I mean so all these things are like no this is for me now and I'm you know I'm stood out here I'm taking breaths and I'm like yeah. so it is in that sense it is very gay it's, it's um, like that uh, Ben Affleck meme where he's like like what is smoking the cigarette yeah. outside it's like, it is it's like, just, like like he's like it's by, just very, by himself yeah. like you know getting getting his emotions out or whatever he's doing yeah. right yeah I mean because it's just it's a it's a it's like two minutes that's yours yeah and and people don't disturb you because people who don't smoke don't come yeah. over to you, and people do smoke understand what you're doing. Yeah. So you, you, it very rarely kind of like disturbs you particularly. So you you have this like two minutes of just standing there breathing. Do you know what I mean? And it's just uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it is very gay when you think about it. And you're trying it's to explain it. Be time. Yeah. It is. Exactly. That's all. That's all it is. Um. But then there is that, that the kind of the taste thing, and then different people have different things to it. So some people it's the smell and so. But anyone who's who smoked regularly, like it never leaves you. Like when you smell, nothing smells better than like when you smell a, a cigarette. Like if you you know the train station or something, you're on the platform, you smell it like down the yeah. downwind. It smells so good. It smells ridiculous. Yeah, my good. grandmother um, would say that she. Uh, I guess she was 
smoking and then like when my older brother and sister were young or my cousins or whatever they're like mm. oh grandma that's nasty and like so she stopped smoking because the grandkids yeah. were like didn't like uh -huh. it and then she would say if she was like well, if we're on the beach or whatever and she smells that cigarette she's like oh i want yeah. a cigarette like i guess there, there is i don't get it but i i don't get it but i get it yeah. you know but i mean uh I don't know. Do you get that with weed, though? If you smell weed, do you think like uh, yeah. I used to a little bit more? Like, oh, it might be nice to. But I like when I was stopping, I would like it was like I'd go a week, and I'd go two weeks, and then I mm. and it'd be like two months, and then I remember going back to it after a couple months and smoking just like a couple hits, and, and I was like, oh, this is it. Like, this is what I was missing. Like, mm. eh, I wish I didn't do it, you know. And so I. I I don't really miss it anymore. Sometimes it's like, oh, the euphoric feeling's cool and, and whatever, but I I really don't, don't have an urge to do it. Mm. So. Um, it says, as now that I don't smoke, I can smell it on people who do. Never smelt it when I smoke. It's not, yeah, that's that's the, the other side to it. So when, like I said, when you smell the smoke in the distance, it smells amazing. When you're next, when you're stood next to someone who's like a, a chain smoker yeah. and you can smell it on the clothes you can smell it like you think like did i did i smell like that i don't i don't think i did like i, I had chewing gum <laughs> i mean like i just feel like there's but, no redeeming good like redeeming qualities when you're first start, starting out smoking i get it if you're already yeah. addicted whatever but like when you're first starting out i don't see again other than like looking cool or whatever but yeah well that's that's what, that's what most people do it isn't it it's, it's again it's conformity it's it's that urge to or that need to fit in so you know if you're in our circles and everyone else is smoking and because like when around that age like i was sort of hanging around with, with people and the, their older brothers and you know that kind of thing and so that you know they were all smoking and they were cool and so you just you know you just did um and again it was you know you were allowed to smoke indoors back then you were allowed to smoke in pubs you were allowed so it was just part of life like you went to the pub everyone smoked like it was just one of those things um so i suppose now it, it it's maybe a bit different but now they've replaced it with vaping yeah. yeah um joe's obviously like added a lot to the chat like i've never smoked cigarettes like great joe awesome. <laughs> thanks for your input. It was around when tobacco was created so it's actually impressive that he's never done it uh sign page says i recently watched the sopranos and it made me miss smoking yeah whenever you see smoking in, and i know that was a lot of edward bernays when you see smoking in films it always looks good same with the drinking yeah yeah I've, i don't even like great <laughs> drinking but like they're always they have like the you know the nice glass and the piece uh -huh. of ice and it's just yeah and they're not like sloppy drunk and they're just you know yeah i don't I, I don't know anyone who has a decanter, um, but they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll always have like a, a like a little square glass with the ice and the decanter, and they'll, they'll sit back as they think about something. Yeah. Um, have you seen the Sopranos? Yeah, I've seen it multiple times. What do you think of it? That's a phenomenal show. Huh. I get how people, huh. people could be like, oh, it's like kind of like douchey Italian mob, which some of it is. Like the Paul, have you seen it? I've, I watched it for the first time because I, I kind of missed it first time yeah. around. Um, yeah, I watched it later on. I didn't watch it when it was happening. Um, well, then it became such a big thing that I thought, like, if I'm, my expectations are too high of this. Do you know what I mean? Like, so if I watch it, it's going to yeah. be crap. So I never watched it. And then we, we, we finished watching it about two months ago. Um, I thought it was good. I enjoyed watching it. I, and I can imagine... I, at the time because it was probably like the first of that kind of like was, long yeah. drawn out tv series like you know what i mean obviously it like they're, they're everywhere now um so i imagine at the time it was like this is fucking amazing um i just i don't know i just i enjoyed watching it but i wasn't like when i've watched breaking bad like i've seen that a couple of times now i i, I have to watch the next episode i've never seen breaking bad <laughs> Breaking Bad's, like, for, for me, I Breaking know. Bad's, like, the I best. I know, I've heard, it's, I've heard it's great. That's, yeah. like, the one show I haven't seen. The one my um, show. But, well, yeah, like, like, so when an episode finishes, I'm like, I, I have to watch that. 
I have to watch the next one. Like I know it's late, but I have to watch the next one. It was Soprano. I was always I could kind of take it. I'll leave, I'll, I was enjoying watching it, but I, I didn't really like. I don't yeah. know. I, it it just kind of missed the mark a bit because it was. I thought it was going to be a lot more graphic, a lot more violent. Do you know I mean I was coming in like thinking it was just going to be like a drawn out Goodfellas kind of thing, um, and it was more about the kind of like personal issues and stuff which I get, but. A, I don't know. I just uh, I was a bit disappointed. But I I enjoyed it, but I was just a bit disappointed with it. it was uh, it was um, really well written, I think. And I it think was good. James Gandolfini is freakishly good at playing that guy. He was born to play that role. He's, there's like certain yeah, like you, with in movies and stuff. There's certain people like Burt Reynolds was born to be Bandit, and so like there's 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 certain like that's what that's that's who that character is. Yeah, and he is just. Tony Soprano. He was, he was perfect for that. Yeah. And that's like, even if you look at his other roles, that's more or less what he's, he like, in true uh, romance. He's like mm-hmm. the big kind of mob enforcer guy. Yeah. Um, he, he's awesome in true romance. Yeah, what's his name? Or Virgil? That's his name? Yeah. Yeah. That, that scene it's when it. they're in the trailer uh, talking to Dennis Hopper and Christopher Walken. That, and that's... Hopper. That's one of the best scenes in like movie. He says history. something to him. I forget what he says, and then they, they, they pan to Tony Soprano's eyes, kind of like dart towards like Christopher Walken to see what he's gonna do. Mm. It's, a, it's just like a good, yeah, a little. Show. Well, well, when he's at yeah. the fridge thing, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, it's it's a great scene. No, no James Gandolfini is like he's. I mean, even in the Mexican, he's good. And I know he plays like a, a queer in the Mexican, but he's he's still he's good at what he does. In that movie, you ever I've seen. seen He's, it's all right. It's a, it's a watchable film. It's like Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts, James Gandolfini, and he, he's like a he's a gay hitman. Um, so there is like he's kind of like coming to terms with the fact that he's gay and all. It's like with it, it's it's just like this weird like angle to did it. Did you ever see um, the, um, killing him softly or slowly? I think it's softly. No, it's again it's James Gandolfini, Brad Pitt, and uh, it's like it's again. It's kind of a similar thing, like the Hitman type thing. Yeah. James Gandolfini, more or less, not plays Tony Soprano, but again, he's like, yeah, big, big guy who's like a degenerate, and you know, but he's great at it. He's a perfect, he's a perfect guy to play that. Have you? Uh, Bobby said uh, Better Call Saul is the best. Have you seen Better Call Saul? No, I haven't seen that. I'm, I'm watching at the moment. Like I bought the. Because we we were streaming it, um, so I've watched season one and I've bought the box set, um, but we only watch them like Friday Saturday, so we, it, it makes it last a bit longer. Um, that's like a, it, it was filmed after Breaking Bad, but it's like a prequel to Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so after I watched, watched Breaking Bad, like second or third time or whatever, I started watching Better Call Saul, and thought it was terrible. Because I was basically like some of the people who die in Breaking Bad are alive in Better Call Saul because it was it's set, so, and I, it was just because like, you're so connected with these like characters, you, it was hard to get your head around. So if you if you do watch them, you, you I think if you watch Better Call Saul first and then Breaking Bad, I think it would be awesome. Um, or just watch, watch Breaking Bad and leave like a gap before Better Call Saul. But Better, Better Call Saul's like brilliant. Um, yeah, I would, oh, yeah, I mean, if I was going to watch one of those, I'd probably watch Breaking Bad just because it's like, I don't know, it's like... It's, it's, like, like, uh, it's the like, same people, same characters, same everything, do you know what I mean? But it's, it's they're, both, they're both really good. Like, Wobbly says she likes the style of it and stuff. Um, yeah, they, it's, it's, it's just, it, it's just I, I put both of those, like, way ahead of the really? Sopranos. Yeah. Um, I like, like uh, True Detective Season 1 is like, you ever see that? Is that with where they're mostly black and there's like a a, a woman in what, what's that? Matthew. Is that the wire? Oh, the wire. The wire is great. That's a great show too. That, that, yeah. I thought we we tried to well, after we finished this browser, we were trying to watch other things. So I was asking around, like, and and loads of people saying you got to watch the wire. You got to watch the wire. That's a good show. You don't like it? I watched. Did I? I don't know if I only watched one episode or I watched two, and I did. I couldn't get into it. I I, I didn't. It was. It just wasn't my thing. I mean, maybe I was missing out on something and it gets good or something. I don't know, but. Or yeah, True Detective season one with Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey. That show, just the first season. I've seen loads of 
clips on um on Instagram with that. And they did like the clips look awesome. Um Good. so yeah, we might we might start yeah, watching other, that. Other seasons are it's like a different whole different mm. thing. It's not continued. That's probably one of the best seasons of, of any show ever. Uh Fulum Bear says the box set who still owns a DVD player. I am very insistent on getting the DVDs. I get the hard copies. Get every like because the streaming thing, it, it it's good for like trial and stuff, but there's there's nothing like like owning the thing. And plus, the streaming things, a lot of them are crap. Like, you'd, um, before I got the Breaking Bad box set, I'd, I'd streamed that, and it put on the last. You know, when you like you stream and you select your episode and all that, because like, I wasn't like it, it, the like the, like a dodgy stream thing, and it put on the last episode. Like yeah. three, be- three yeah, before the end. Season, I was like, "What the, what the fuck?" Like, like, doing, like why have you shown me like the end? Yeah, my um, my battery's probably about to die in a little bit, and uh, all right, okay. also, can contact. Um, are you still up right now? My gosh, what is it? Two. It's only two twenty. It's early doors yet for. <laughs> um, two acres got a VCR as well. There's some old dub tapes, good stuff. I've had um, my mom and dad have got um, like a, a VCR that copies stuff onto a DVD. So I've, I've all my old tapes and stuff is um, are on DVD. Wobbly says Breaking Bad is better to watch first. Do you think Wobbly or do you like? I say like if you hadn't watched either, I'd probably watch Better Call Saul and then Breaking Bad because it, it, there's like I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. Um. All right, it's done. I'm going to hop Yeah. Good, good talking with you. Yeah, you, you too. Um, and we shall catch up soon. Yeah, I'll see you in the chat. All right, see All right buddy. See you. Uh, right, thank you, everybody, for coming along and playing with us. Uh, let's see if we've got any more things. Um, FRB, your favorite cartoon when you were a kid? Go to we'll have to wait till next time to find out. Um, stunt answer my, my question what do you think happens to the princess I think she was diana Um, there is a heavy rumour that uh, what's he called William was cheating on her or something Um, and then she's kicked off and it's got out of hand but, I mean, I don't know if that's just a rumour or if that's... I mean, obviously it's a rumour, but I don't know if there's any truth to that. But there was, like, marks on his face and all this. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know why why they would put out the photos with the doctored images on them and all that. Like, I don't, I don't know why they would do all that if there was no issue. Um, so they're either just messing about with everybody or there's something happened because it would be it would they must know that, that these rumors are going around so they could just have her come out and talk and they haven't they've just shown like these weird um like photoshopped images of her and stuff so i don't I don't know why they do that it doesn't make any sense stay in my ear um yeah so i think i think, I think she's gone i think she's gone by wise but I don't. Th- I don't think they could do another Diana. I don't think they could say, "Well, it's a, it was an accident or whatever." So I think they're just hiding it and hoping it goes away. But if once when, when Charlie dies and William becomes king, then it's going to be obvious, isn't it? So I don't know. Maybe that's why they're doing it now. Maybe it's kind of like so everyone forgets what she looked like. I don't, I don't know. Um, but, but I don't, don't really. The royal family are just. It's a tourist attraction. Like I don't, I don't see anything else that they do. Um, yeah, easy to stop rumors if they wanted to. Yeah, exactly. She could just come out and talk, and and they haven't. They just put like photoshopped images of her. She's still alive. Look, here's a photo from ten years ago. Uh, what's up, Grungy? Right, everybody. Um, I shall love you and leave you because it's two twenty-four in the mornings. Um, thanks all for hanging out. I think we got Duodecimal on. Next week, hopefully, so you might have to reschedule. But 
hopefully he's coming on next uh, next Thursday. So have great weekends, everybody, um, and I shall see you next week.